Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to session one of Vecna, Eve of Ruin, right here at Proficiency Bonus. My name is Michael. I'll be your dungeon master for the evening, and I am here gathered by my wonderful cast. Everybody say hi to our audience. <laughs> we are super pumped to be bringing you uh, this new campaign from Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we're shifting gears a little bit from our normal Dragon Bane group on, from on Monday, so we're going to be shifting gears here and uh, running this new module. So tonight we're doing something a little bit different. We are actually going to be running the intro adventure, which is called Nest of the Eldritch Eye, to get us into Vecna Eve, Eve of Ruin. Um, this was kind of a promotional thing that Wizards of the Coast did, that if you pre-ordered the bundle online, those pre-orders, you got this extra bonus adventure, this intro adventure. So our characters tonight are going to be starting off at third level, and it's going to be a pretty exciting uh, way to introduce this new campaign. So, but before we begin, I do want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank Cardboard Castle Games and Little Dragon Corp for all their support. If you type in exclamation point CCG or exclamation point Little Dragon in our Twitch chat, you'll get quick links to their storefronts where you can purchase awesome RPG related merchandise and math rocks and all kinds of cool things. Uh, you can use the coupon code BONUS at checkout for 15% off your order when you're visiting Little Dragon Corp. So make sure you do that at some point during tonight's show. Um, I also wanted to throw out a couple of quick announcements about rules that we're going to be using because we are on the tr a transitional period here within the Dun Dungeons and Dragons universe where they are releasing new players handbooks and dungeon master guides. Uh, we don't have them yet, but they're coming soon. Uh, so I did want to mention that we are going to be using uh, some different rules. For one, I let the characters all choose a feat at level one because that's one of the new rules that's going to be coming out in the PHP whenever it does come out. Uh, of course, they got to pick their own, and they had to make sure that it fit their character background, which we'll go into a little bit more detail uh, once you get to know their characters during this session. Uh, another uh, rule change that we're going to implement is that uh, potions, especially healing potions, are bonus actions, because they changed that rule for the upcoming rule book. So you'll get to uh, see that as well. Um, oh, uh, thanks, Derek, for giving us a uh, confirmation on the sound. I appreciate that. If you guys hear anything uh, iffy on the sound, just let me know and I can uh, go in and adjust things. Uh, another rule that we are going to be implementing is Inspiration. Inspiration is a reroll. It's no longer Advantage. And that being said, I wanted to let you guys know, our viewers for tonight, that we did some updating on our Probo Point chat rewards. Uh, so if you are in chat, I've made them more affordable than ever. I've made them super cheap, guys. You can get some of these great uh, uh, rewards uh, for chat now. I, I didn't make them literally like 20,000 points anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you want, by just by tuning in and you want to help our players, or if you're a little bit devious and you want to help the Game Master out, either way... Uh, you can earn those uh, channel rewards and you can cash them in during the show and they can build up so that our players can either get re-rolls or they can get extra die uh, rolls on top, like inspiration rolls. So uh, make sure that you stay tuned in and you can cash some of those in uh, tonight. And it seems like we've already got one coming in. Uh, 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 game master re-roll. I'll put that down on my list. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. I appreciate that. <laughs> Your favorism. <laughs> and it looks like we've already got redeemed uh, on screen celebration uh, as well. Yeah, I so. To that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to do. Oh, we'll have to get a good on screen celebration here soon. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention before we start our adventure tonight is a huge thank you to our artist Stephen oh, Bell. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. Uh, Stephen Bell, who brought our characters to life, you can see them on the overlay. Uh, he did an amazing job on all the character art. Uh, and if you type in the Twitch chat, exclamation point, Vecna Art, you'll get links to all of his uh, social media accounts where you can check out all of his stuff. So make sure you do that and support him if you can. Uh, fantastic, fantastic artist. 
without further ado, I really think that's all our announcements. That's it. Does anyone have um, any uh, last wishes? I do. I do. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I have one announcement. Uh, a shout out to Beltis and to Numeral who are in the chat. Uh, going to say prayers go out to the people in Texas. That's why Nikki is not here today. Mm. Because her mm. is hitting too hard to be online. Mm. But other than that, we are ready to rock. All right. Yep. Yep. Definitely thinking about all the people in the path of that hurricane. Mm hmm. Well, and then I'll yep. also toss out here where uh, Michael didn't mention it. You can also uh, chip in your Provo points. You'll see at the top of that section that there is a Charm of Vecna. It is a goal-based reward that'll help out the players going into the full campaign if we manage to hit the goal by the end of this session. So now if you're out there, help us out. Oh yeah, we were already oh. uh oh f already four thousand raised to that community yeah. challenge as uh, people have been unloading. Uh, <laughs> oh, and there it goes. Yep. Yep. Community <laughs> challenge complete. Oh, Christy, <laughs> Christy, <laughs> Mystic Water, topped you guys off. Look at that, hundred percent goal achieved. Well done, thank you, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> and Derek and Dogs for Life, everybody chiming in. Oh man, that was amazing. So they they will get a, a little bit more of a buff, uh, but we have to wait for that buff until the end of this intro adventure because that's where it will take place. I think we so, need to start setting our challenges higher. Jeez. Well, I, I wanted the first one to be low just to see. I was just you know, they'll they'll, they'll get harder as the, as time goes on. So without further ado, I'm going to get you guys right into this uh, this game. Um, let me change my music. Because I need to get it set. Something more appropriate. So. After a long week... Of patrolling the city streets of Neverwinter in the employ of Lord Protector Dagalt Neverember. The anguished scream of a woman erupts from an alley nearby. <coughs> what do you do? Immediately start charging in. Okay. Uh, since you spoke first, uh, Matthew, would you please describe for us your character, what they look like? Well, hello, Orkin the Orphic to orate what you obviously have already observed. He is an obstinate individual wearing a opaque mask covering his face. A brown hooded robe over simple dyed purple leather armor with a dark brown and like a light blue grayish crystal emblem in the middle. Uh, worn on his waist is a somewhat simple looking metal lantern. If you look closely in the central opening where you would typically expect to see a light within, you see what appears to be a small storm constantly brewing within this lantern. As, as Orcon... you do on his face. Mm -hmm. And as Orcon begins to respond to the scream, running towards it in the alleyway, who would follow? All right. Hazel, go ahead and uh, describe what Hazel looks like for us. H Hazel is a tall compared to most people, but short for a furbolg, six foot eleven furbolg, so the front of the family, uh, with pale gray and white skin and fur over her whole body. Her hair is long, silver, white, gray, and she is pretty simple in her clothing. She's wearing um, black pants and a, like a light gray blue tunic under some 
dark gray armor. And on the armor, you'll see moonflowers and night blooming jasmine embossed in it as she runs after Orkin. Excellent. Um, as you guys around a bend, you run into a couple of the other members of your group who had been patrolling with you. Who would they run into first? Um, you see a... <laughs> Not not exactly very tall. I'd probably say about a five eight, regular gentleman, uh, dressed in a cravat with a tailcoat jacket, ridiculously linked tails, so they're just kind of flapping around like dramatically. Um, doesn't really seem to respond to the scream so much. Just easier just to be here to to, to get paid, you know. He, doesn't really not 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 very concerned just lackluster uh dark curly hair dark brown eyes okay would uh would forest be concerned oh yes immediately so with a little different expression can you describe forest who's standing next to odd uh forest is a young man with red hair uh he's got like a nice beard but it's like just a little bit unkempt he wears uh, chainmail armor. Uh, at this moment, he probably already has his longsword drawn. And you can see the symbol of Lathander embrace, uh, emblazoned on his shield. Fantastic. As you guys meet up as a group, you can see or you can tell that the sound wasn't coming from too far off. And you guys hurry your way down the edge of this alley. Whereas you turn around the bed, you can see that last member of your party is standing there still, looking towards the source of the scream. Uh, Selena, will you describe your character for us? Selena's the shortest member of the group, standing three feet tall. She's a light foot halfling with bright blue eyes, pale skin with somewhat of a pinkish muscles, ears wavy, about yay long, um, not very intimidating looking, but she does wear leather on that as a horseshoe embossed in it. Um, and she's always got a rapier a sword either at her side, or in this case, she's definitely already drawn it, but easily to the back because she's so short. Excellent. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of what you're standing witnessing. Uh, as you guys all kind of come out of this alleyway. And honestly, if you're in roll 20 already, you can see uh, an image of what you're witnessing, but I'm going to omit a few things. Um, the sound you can see came from a slender human woman clad in light leather armor. Clutched in her arms is the dead body of a human man clad in a tattered gray robe. Even from this distance, you can tell the man and the woman bear a striking resemblance to each other. Are you guys able to see that image on the screen in Roll20? Uh, ignore the giant skeleton creature uh, creeping over the backdrop and all the other like people in the background the woman and the man that you see on that image is exactly what you see as you come out from the alleys. I'd like to approach the woman. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Um, you can see she's wow. like, she's kneeling down and she's hunched over him and you can see like she's starting to cry. She's... <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey, up here. I'm talking to you. She slowly looks up and you can see tears are kind of pouring down her face. Why'd you do it? That's we, quite oh, the conclusion to jump to here. Hold on a moment. <laughs> hey, I'm trying, trying to end this quickly. Why'd you do it? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> this, You're the only one this here. One. Hmm? This what, all what, calm down why would you? Why would you think you I would tell us what happened here? I would do this to my brother? What your brother? Yes. 
Ah, uh, okay, I see the resemblance. Alright, <laughs> tell us what happened. I don't know, she, this was this was supposed I to be where we we were supposed to we were supposed to rendezvous here. This was our meeting place. And I showed up and he he was like this. So you you, you met him here dead or you he was dead and then you met him. We were scheduled to meet here. And when I got oh. here, he was dead. All right, I got nothing. <laughs> um, at, this, at this point, as she's kind of like holding on to him, she shifts his body a little bit and his arm kind of unfolds. And with a dull thump, a desiccated eyeball rolls out of the dead man's palm onto the ground in front of you guys. Is that his eye? <laughs> What, what was that for us? Is that is it his eye? Like, can we see on his face that like he only has one eye? Um, you look at him and he has both eyes. Hazel, Hazel goes forward, says nothing, and with a little like container off of her, out of her stuff, she just scoops the eye to a jar and backs away quietly, says nothing. Okay. So the oh, the wow. woman the woman kind of looks at you and she's like, "What what was he holding? What was that?" Mm. Kalska, Kalska, mm. Hazel looks at <laughs> Forrest and just says, mm -mm -mm -mm, and just walks back behind, trying to hide even though she's the tallest. And you can tell this this woman is a complete wreck. Like she's emotional, uh, and just completely have lost is kind of like lost her mind to the point of shock right now. Uh, holding her dead brother in her hands and looks to you says, I'm, 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 like, my name's Kavori. This, could, this is my, that. this is my, my brother, um, Delvin. Was your brother Delvin? Unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do... Do you know what he was doing earlier? Like, I can see that Forrest is going to be the yang to odds yang already in this event. <laughs> um, say that again, Forrest, for me. Uh, do you know what your brother was doing earlier tonight? He, um... He said that he had some information about some sort of hidden cult activity. He said he wasn't sure... But he wanted me to meet him here tonight once he found out for sure. Would you mind if I took a look at the body? Uh, let's go ahead and make a roll. Make a persuasion roll. Oh, 19. Oh, yeah. She uh, sort of, you see her kind of rest the body down on the ground and sort of slide back from it. Still sitting on the ground, but kind of pulling her uh, feet in, almost sitting, you know, crisscross on the ground. Uh, you can see that there's like some blood stains on her pants and stuff from the, the wounds that he has. Uh, but you go ahead, you kind of look down and you start to kind of inspect over the body. Um, he doesn't really have anything on him, but you're starting to fiddle around, and inside one of his pockets, you pull out this torn piece of parchment that has a scribble upon it. And I'm going to share with you in the roll 20 a handout of Delvin's note. Uh, show to players, show to everyone. This is what it says. Um, it says, Hail the Undying. Upon the parchment. Uh, can I tell, like, what might have killed him? Anything like that? <laughs> um, it's pretty obvious. He it probably um, some type of scimitar or short sword wounds, multiple. Oh my gosh! There's been a ton of things like put in the chat of redeemed <laughs> things. <laughs> I'm going to need somebody to start watching chat for me and keep track of all these things. <laughs> oh, 
And I am sorry to say it cannot be me. I did not think this through. And <laughs> everything is red. Is not, <laughs> everything is red. I'll try to go back and check. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing I have is a GM reroll down on my list, but there's a lot of other things that came in there. So we have a one D eight inspiration. Wait, yeah, D eight, D eight proficiency bonus for odd. Okay, well here's what we're going to do. We're going to just put those in a pool. We're not going to do them for specific players anymore. Um, there's just a pool. So anytime you want to use anything that's in the pool, you can ask the party, hey, can I use this? And if the party says, hey, go for it, then you can take it and roll with it. Works for me. That, that way it's for everybody and you guys can all decide. So would Forrest be, sh would Forrest be sharing what he's finding out with all of us? Uh, yes, that uh, I would like to ask everyone, including um, this woman here, if these words mean anything to them. Um, Kavori kind of looks at it as she's looking over. She's, I have no idea what that means. Does it Odd. mean anything to us? Odd puts the tip of his shoe up um, against the tip of the body shoe. Mm -hmm. and he's like seeing if he has the same size shoe. And he goes, what? Yeah, no, um. No, it doesn't mean anything to me. I mean, you guys can all decide. Tell me, does it mean anything to your character? Do you think your character would have any knowledge about any of this? Uh, I mean, the undying, like the undying specifically. I mean, obviously, there's undead and things like that, and uh, the light stands against these things, but nothing specific. Mm. Yeah, no, nothing that's popping out to me, like. Um, as you guys are sitting there, um, Kavori's trying to, like, regain her composure of some sort, but you can tell, like, she's a long way from being able to do that. Um, she looks at all of you and says, Look, I need to report this to Lord Neverember, the Hall of Justice. I need to let him know how my brother died. Uh, I'll, Can of course, um, I'll, I'll go with you. I've got a better idea. Nope. Take what you found, and I implore you, avenge my brother's death. Find out more information about what he was after. Find out what he found. I'm not even sure where to begin here. And did that not lead to his death? I'm not. What it, are we sure it was due to what he found and it's not someone looking to end your family line? You could be in danger. You guys are awful. It may be best noble. for us to... <laughs> escort you to the Lord's Manor. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm asking a price first. <laughs> Listen, I can I can handle things. I can handle things here. Clearly. But I need to get him back. I need to let Lord Never Ember know what has happened. Immediately. Two questions. Back where? And why would all kings should care about all subject, but why would the king care about your brother being dead? Because if he really did find out information about some secret cult that's going on underneath the city or around the city, then the Lord Protector's going to want to know about it. Thank, thank you, Nikki. I didn't even realize I was off camera. <laughs> oh, jeez. The, these little squares did not work well with me. <laughs> if we do agree to help look for your brother's killer, how do we notify you? 
You can find me back at the Hall of Justice. And if Odd is right, then somebody is coming for you. No, that was, that was Oregon. Oregon, sorry. Yeah. Your videos are right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Morgan. Right. <laughs> uh, she kind of looks over and she's like, I can't think of any such reason why anybody would be after me. But I'll keep a lookout. What is it you do? I work for Lord Neverember. I'm just paid patrol. Basically, what she's saying is she does exactly what you guys are doing. Uh, I'd like to take mm -hmm. a look around the area a little bit, see if I can anything that stands out even just a little bit unordinary. OK, not, go ahead not, and make an investigation not, check. Not exactly what we do. We we survive. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> <clears throat> Investigation eight. Uh, just snooping around. I mean, it's a dirty city alleyway area. Not really finding anything that would be like out of the ordinary, other than the fact that a person just got slain here not too long ago. I get any idea of how long ago he might have been uh, killed here. Um, anybody who'd like to make like a medicine check on the body, inspect the body. You can if you'd like. Huh? Guess I will. <laughs> Not terrible. So everybody, everybody's kind of like hovering around the, the corpse and just looking over. Sort of behind uh, Hazel is waiting for her to finish his. Okay. Um, Forrest. He's probably been dead for an hour and a half. Two hours? Okay. Give or take. So, like, not like five minutes ago, but <laughs> hasn't been laying there for days. All right, all right. Uh... Listen, I'd really like to find this cult personally but I don't know where he was looking for them, anything about this. I don't know. This is a big city. Well, maybe that piece of paper and that whatever she picked up, maybe those are some clues that can help. Who picked up what? Hazel's just staring, like, as if she's not here anymore, not interested anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Please, if you could, at least just try to investigate it. And she goes over to her brother and she kind of like heaves him up and like puts him over her shoulder. And like she just starts kind of like crying again and just starts like slowly kind of walking towards one of the alleys towards kind of like more like the busier part of the city where it's going to be like where you guys were initially hired by the Lord Protector. <clears throat> As she starts to walk away, Orkin's going to walk over to Hazel. Uh, as another she's leaving, can I see what is it you picked up? It looked... Hazel pulls out the jar, keeping her back to where Kavori went. Mm -hmm. And, like, is holding it up like it's the coolest thing she's ever seen. This <laughs> just attached eyeball. She's like... It's a nasty, nasty eyeball. <laughs> You just gotta find the person who matches this eye. It's gonna be so easy. <laughs> Organ's gonna ask if he can take it and look at it. Hazel hands it to Organ. No problem. She... Yeah. You know, what does it look like? Well, like <laughs> feels, it feels, like feels like an eyeball. That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Feels like an eyeball. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it looks red. Blue, green. What are we dealing with? 
Um, Brent, do you probably, remember? Pr probably a little, a little, um, almost looking a little cataract, uh, okay. little kind of white, hazy, decrepit, nasty. <laughs> Chat wants you to lick the eyeball. <laughs> do it. Do it. Like the, uh, do it for the people. Make sure it's real. <laughs> <laughs> It's not about anything. <laughs> um, I I would not lick that eyeball. <laughs> no, I I'm I do it for the viewers. <laughs> okay. look at it and her stomach grumbles, and then she puts it back in the jar and puts the jar away. Sure. Okay. Do we think the eye is a clue, or was he killed because he had the eye? Um. Or What do you think, Hazel? Yeah. Mm. Hazel's just mm. peeking Wait. down at the eye, and she just kind of shrugs. What did that note say again? Hail, Hail the undying. young dying. And then we have a petrified eyeball. Well, it doesn't look petrified. He just looks cataract, like an old man. No, he said it was like, what did you say when it first rolled out of his hand? The word that she used it was... A desiccated like, eyeball. Desiccated. Desiccated. Uh, Hazel, do you still have the eyeball out, or did you already put it away? She would have started to put it away because to her this is a fun treasure, and then because yeah, I, I just want to make sure. Now, did you guys, when Odd asked you that question, did you all say out loud, "Hail the Undying" at the same time? No, uh, probably just me. Okay, when Forrest said that, the eyeball in the jar started to glow a sickly green color and turned and started looking in a direction. Ooh, okay. Does it, does it look at forest or does it look somewhere else? It looks somewhere else. Like behind right. us from the alley? Like, is it leading us out of the alley? Yes, it is. <laughs> it could tell us things. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Compass. But, but wait, I, I'm Baron. pretty sure I've heard of a very specific undying one-eyed creature. You ever heard of Alistair Moody? <laughs> Can't say I've come across it. No? no? Oh, okay. Is he from the Sword Coast or from somewhere else? I that way somewhere else. I was thinking something. Okay. <laughs> How many times have we told you we're not from your strange plane? <laughs> you can go find your Alistair when you go back home. <clears throat> That's like, right, Chad. Like, the, 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 plane <laughs> the plane of London. <laughs> yes, we know all about your sultans of swing and all that in London now, <laughs> you told us. Um... Hazel Shall we spins follow Hazel's new friend? Yeah. Hazel spins like with the jar. And will try to, like, keeping her giant fur hands around the jar so no one can see the eye, like, passerbys in the street can't see it. And she's just holding it and walks. Kind of, like, not paying attention if she's going to walk into people. As she goes, she's just following the eye. And then she quickly looks down at Selena and just says, Do you think it'll turn when we're supposed to turn? Or do you think we have to say the magic words again? Well, let's test it out. Try like turn in a circle, see if it always faces the same way. <laughs> Hazel looks at Forrest and goes, I wasn't talking to you. And looks <laughs> Yes. It might have a time limit. As the group starts walking away, following the the direction of their compass eyeball, um, <laughs> I'm going I'm to flip a silver to a random like homeless person before walking off and following them. Okay. And, uh, just gently whisper to them, "I want those shoes off of that body by the time I get back." Just 
start following them. Sister took the body, odd. He looks yeah, he looks he looks very confused. So <laughs> thanks for your generosity. I wanted the shoes off of your body then. Um, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make sure I'm not here when you get back. <laughs> he skitters off. Damn, there's a fast old man. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> um, with the response from Forrest, even though she didn't ask him, and Selena's time limit comment, Hazel does just quickly spin in a circle mm-hmm. to see if the eye keeps its position or it does keep its position Ew. Ew. cool and Hazel just starts walking again like she's mm. she's a giant furbolg in this she's very noticeable mm. and she's just carrying something and walking blindly <laughs> and just goes oh Selena just keep a, keep a timer in your head let's see how long it goes, goes this way and Hazel's just walking Okay, um, and you, if you're just going to keep walking, uh, you do find that it is pointing in a specific location, and it doesn't, like, account for buildings and things in your way. So, like, there are times where you have to, like, walk around a building or through the downstairs of somebody's living room. He's you know? Like, I'm going <laughs> to follow her and just, like, gently turn her in before she walks. <laughs> that's, <the wall>. that's right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, it continues to lead you, and um, as you guys are following along, you realize after a little bit of time that this is leading you into like the city's like western uh, areas, and the the specifically the western areas that were so. There was a time in the history of Neverwinter when this massive. Um, Basically, a giant hole opened up in the city and undead and monsters like poured out of it into the city. Uh, And Neverwinter was like almost completely destroyed because of it. Well, they've gotten that that place kind of like built back up again. They're building on top of it, but it's still kind of like a ruin and rubble and things like that in those areas. So it's still kind of in rough shape. But after some time walking and following this eyeball compass, the withered eyeball aims its empty gaze down an alley that's strewn with rubble. Rats scurry between chunks of old stone and dusty crates. At the back of the alley is a set of moldering wood boards that are propped up enough to block a dark tunnel leading below the surface. How far away is that? Uh, Just right down the alley. 60 feet. Okay... Sorry, I was muted. No, go ahead. Go ahead. How many rats are there? Other than rats, is there signs of like anything else? Um, what exactly signs of living creatures? What exactly are you looking for? That old man that ran off with the shoes. (laughs) That guy's long gone. (laughs) (laughs) You followed us. You didn't give chase. You lost us. Say again, Selena. What what was it that you were? Anything in particular? Anything specific? We were headed towards the um, kind of ruined area where the undead used to be. Yeah, this was this was a long time ago. Yeah. Uh oh, she like froze up on me. So as we're as we're getting closer to these ruins, um, a little bit at a time, like a couple right. frames. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I paused. I'm like, it's <laughs> back. <laughs> sorry about that, Shannon. Like you kind of froze up on me, so I couldn't hear what you were saying. It was it was locking up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. <laughs> um. I was asking about undead or okay. other living creatures besides the rats. I mean, just looking if down there. Yeah, just looking yeah. down that alley, you don't see anything. I mean, you could do a closer look. You could, like, go down and kind of investigate things if you wanted to, but that's up to you guys. Concerns out loud at all? Yes. Uh, in I'm that the case, shortest one I... in the group you guys have. <laughs> 
It, you guys uh, can see a lot more than we can. Anything up there? Uh, not that I can see, but just give me a moment, and I'm going to use my divine sense. Divine sense. Oh, nice. I can detect good and evil, and I can sense anything affected by the hallow spell, and know the location of any celestial fiend and undead within 60 feet. Within 60 feet. Um, within that range, you are not getting anything that would make you uneasy. Not in our immediate vicinity, anyway. Wait, you insinuating something? Hey, so walk right up to where to the following the eye. Okay, yeah, it leads you right up to where it looks like all these like boards have been like just propped up. And this kind of dark opening behind it. Okay, and your hand was moving, but were you supposed to be talking? <laughs> oh, I was muted. Y'all couldn't hear me. Nope. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> sure was, I'm, I'm sure it was fantastic, but <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> that monologue. That was One of the hard parts about wearing a mask is y'all don't have a clue when I'm talking. Yeah, anymore. I have no clue when you're muted anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> just keep the hand gestures um, going. But, uh, for Forrest, your uh, ability, what is it, sense again? Celestial, fiend, and undead. Okay. Um, and then, sorry, at, at the, uh, looking at the, in the opening of those boards, what do I yeah. see looking into the hole? Just looks like darkness beyond. How far beyond? I have devil sight out to 120 feet. Uh, it kind of comes down some steps and then looks like it turns to your left. And it disappears. Yeah, or can I look back at the group and just go, oh, it travels forward for a while and then turns left down some stairs. Okay. Well, um, it, it, don't look at me like that. We, it's just a gift. I can see in the dark. As we get closer to this, uh, this. So why are you, wherever where this, you wherever wherever this thing is leading us. us. I have to say, slowly but surely, my disdain for the fact that we didn't ask for any money for this is raising very slowly. So, <clears throat> who wants to lead? Because it's not going to be me. <laughs> Orkin just starts walking in because looking at you. Help and <laughs> yeah, you do have to. Him. Yeah, you do have to move some of the boards out of the way, but you can see like it's very easy to do so. They're just kind of like leaning up there. As if somebody was just like just throwing these things up there quickly and making it very easy to remove them. So you guys remove them and I'm going to take you over to a new map in roll 20. So I'm hoping that you you guys will be able to see correctly. I tried to get all the tokens set up the way uh, and it would work. Are you guys able to see your tokens? Yep. In a little hallway. And, and you're all jammed in a little hallway. That's right. <laughs> uh, basically, if you guys look back the hall past where Odd's character is, and I'm going to get my uh, Twitch map up so everybody can see. Uh, if you look back behind Odd, that's kind of where you entered from the boards, and that's where that left turn was. It only went about 30 feet or so, and then it turned left. Okay. And all this hallway kind of leads down very cramped, small, old hallway. Uh, as you guys are making your way down here. Feel free to reorganize your tokens in the way that you would want to be positioned. Um, um, Orchid's taking points. I just, yeah, I just kind of just put them all on there. So I that way know. you guys can kind of see. Orkin would not be around this corner quite yet. I'm just... Right. Around. Yeah, <laughs> right. Anyone bring a light with them? Torch, anything? Uh, so the party would know, because we've been working together for a little while, that Orkin just doesn't, never uses lights, doesn't use a torch. I think I have. There are what it seems to be two rusted, like, sconces with burning torches at the very end of this hallway. Are you guys able to see a little bit of light from the map coming from the end of the yeah, hallway? Like a, like a single ray, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, there are torches there that are lit. 
to grab I'm assuming you must have mine set up with the dark vision on it. <laughs> I do. You okay, won't. You say... won't have to worry about anything. Because I can see everything. Yeah. Yep. Each individual <laughs> token is set up based on your character's uh, sight descriptions, so it should be accurate. Um. Hazel would. Um, I don't know. Or... Hazel I think you gave me dark vision. I don't have dark vision. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, changelings don't have dark vision. Hmm. Just want to let yeah. you know, but yeah, That's continue. Fine. I mean, a lot of this, a lot of this area has torches in it anyway, so it might be light that you're already seeing from uh, elsewhere. But we can we can look at it later. Uh, Hazel taps Orkin on the shoulder. Can you grab me one of those torches? Not all of us are cool like you. <laughs> Orchid will walk over, pull it down, and bring it back over to uh, Hazel. Okay. So, Hazel, People you're going to be jar in holding one hand on. And the other. Jar, jar, eyeball jar in one hand, a torch in the other. I like it. <laughs> I will go ahead and I will add some admitting light from your Is token. So, Selena, would you like the other one? I think she froze again. Oh, I think we lost her again. Sure, I'll, I'll take the other one down and give it to Selena. I think she said sure. <laughs> okay. So we got both Hazel I'll... and Selena carrying torches. And I think I've got you guys set that it'll it'll the light will follow your characters around now. I once I have the torch I move forward a little. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay. So yeah, as you as you guys move into this next area, I'll go ahead and kind of describe what you guys see. Uh, you know, there's I'm just trying to stay about five or ten feet in front of people, trying to move without realizing how little that does for him with light right behind him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just trying to be a little quiet, moving in, but. Yeah. So what you guys see is soft lapping water echoes through this wide chamber. Uh, wood and stone debris from collapsed buildings litter this entire area. There's brackish water that floods nearly half of the chamber, and it gets deeper uh, toward a dark tunnel that leads to the west. I really don't want to get wet. <laughs> I thought that was what the goggles were for. What, what, what does he have goggles for, then? Uh, Hazel moves around, just trying to see everything, and realizing, like, that's the whole chamber. She just sighs. <laughs> Odd, is, Odd is over is, here in the corner, just kicking kicking rocks. Is the, uh, is the, Hazel, is like, your, what, um, what is your passive perception score? Wisdom uh, perception. I don't know yet. My <laughs> passive perception, uh, 12. It's 12. Oh, that's exactly what you needed. Um, actually, as you're kind of like moving your way down on that side of the the room, uh, you can see there's an entrance to what seems to be some sort of very small cramped tunnel down here uh, to the southeast of the room. Uh, it looks like it's heavily collapsed with a lot of rubble and debris. But you think if you spent like a minute maybe clearing out some of the rubble, you could potentially squeeze through there. Um, is the eye pointing? Which way is the eye pointing? The eye currently from, from, okay, so orientation with the map that you guys are looking at, it would be kind of to the southwest. So through the water. In kind of that direction, mm -hmm. but it almost seems like the tunnel like leads kind of in that direction, but the eyeball kind of points more south than where the uh, the water oh. is. Got it. Uh, Hazel's going to walk Hazel, over that... to... Yeah? That jar has a lid on it, right? Yes. Being so close to the water, is the jar attached to you at all? Just in case? It no, just in to... okay. Hazel doesn't think that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> As evidenced by I've just an an <laughs> If you need some rope. I, I, 
Are you making that suggestion in character? Yeah. Yes. I, think she is. I. Hazel looks down at the jar and just kind of goes, <sighs> I guess rope would be handy if we don't want to lose this. I think I have some too, though, and Hazel will find a little bit of rope and all of her stuff and would um, mm. kind of like tie it to her belt, you know? Okay. So it's like so now you're se you're securing the eye uh, the eye glass bottle to your yeah. waist like a it's belt, like a okay? <laughs> on the bottom of the bar so it can't fall out, and then. Fantastic. Yeah, it still kind of glows and pulses with that sickly green light as it's looking in that direction. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Isa points to the small tunnel and says, "If we don't want to get wet, I don't know if I could fit through there. We have to clear out some stuff first. Orkin's going to come over and take a look. Can we see through to the other side? You know, you said it sort of collapsed. Is there anything? Yeah, it just looks like it just keeps on going straight. Uh, and and the, it's really kind of rough hewn on the edges. So it makes it to where you can't just like look straight and see the other side. So somebody's going to have to like get in there and kind of like squeeze through to to actually see what's beyond. Uh, just, nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. It might be a bit easier for her than the rest of us. I mean, Did you? Well, Selena, you trying it? I think so. Okay. I have the the torch, so I should be able to see. Okay. Okay. Um. Or can so, sort of help and try to move some of the stones out of the way. Try to. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. With with help, oh, it yeah. takes you less than a minute. Like you guys all like group together, 20, 30 seconds. You've got enough space, Selena. That you can start kind of squeezing through this crawl space here. Um, as you are kind of moving, uh, you find that this is actually, it's small, but because of your small stature, it's not really that difficult for you. Um, <laughs> you're just kind of yeah. just like moving along. Um, you, you do kind of bump into a couple of uh, pieces of like wooden debris though, as you're kind of squeezing through. And I need you to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for me. Don't know how to do a throw. So if you if you do the uh, open your character sheet and roll twenty, and okay. you go to I think it's on the top left of your character sheet, you'll see um, a, a box that says saving throws, kind of to the left right next to your hit points. And okay. you'll see dexterity is the second one under strength. If you hover over dexterity and click on it, it will automatically roll it in the chat for you. Come on, save. <laughs> you got this. I don't know if that worked. Yeah. Go through. I didn't get anything yet. No. Are you clicking that on your roll twenty character sheet or on your D and D Beyond character sheet? Because it's got to be the roll twenty one. Oh uh, yeah, you got to open it from your journal and roll twenty in order for that that to work. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I was in the wrong wrong page. <laughs> Multiple <laughs> digital sheets can get confusing at times. I understand. Oh, there it is. Look at that. A sixteen. A 16 will save. So as you're kind of bumping some of these things, some of the rubble does start to kind of collapse in around you. But like I said, your small stature helps you to be able to avoid uh, taking any sort of damage or being pinned by any of this debris. And you're easily able to squeeze through the rest of the crawl space. So you should be able to move your character down there uh, in the map. So you can kind of keep moving your character and I will kind of just stop you as you... Come to a certain spot. Actually, I'll stop you right there. Uh, so this the tunnel splits three ways. Didn't so you can say something. What? What's up? 
Uh, I was trying to talk to, to Orkin before this even started. Uh, do you have any room in your bag? Uh, how? <laughs> just just, some, just some, some articles of clothing. Could you hold on to it for me? How often do you need them? Uh, later. And then... Odd is going to snap his fingers and immediately transform into a little boy. Little boy. And begin going down the tunnel after. But <laughs> okay. now remember, do, do me, do me a favor. Do me, a, do me a favor, me. David, though. Here's what I want you to do. Only do the little boy voice when you are speaking in character. Because that's going to really throw me off and give me nightmares. <laughs> when you're narrating your actions, do it in your David voice. <laughs> All right. so imagine uh, when, when, when Odd snaps his fingers, pretty much the clothes just drop because he's, he, he doesn't have disguised self. So he's just doing alter self. So he is a tiny little naked human boy running down the <laughs> running down the hall in the dark after after um <laughs> okay this is a so, pg stream so guys, it's, you, selena as as you're getting to this uh opening point uh, you turn you hear a shuffling behind you and there's this small naked boy <laughs> running out of that you've never seen before <laughs> running out of the hall uh have my sword out if I heard if I saw somebody else new. <laughs> yeah, has Odd ever done this in front of us or is just uh no, no. <laughs> it has no clue, it's you. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This is gonna go so well. Um Hi <laughs> Who are you? What where's the party? Oh, oh guy, it's 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 me. It's me. B. Hi, Ad. Just, just kind of standing there, staring at her, expecting to know who me is. <laughs> I would say because this is a PG stream, when you transform, you automatically come with tidy whities. It's like it's like it's like you know the the baby doll like uh, things. Whenever they they have the 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 plastic underwear is like already embedded on them. So you're, you're <laughs> Free loin cloth. That's it. The loin cloth. Uh, the tunnel does split here. Uh, you can see you can go back north the way you came. You can go to straight down this tunnel to the west, or you can kind of go south. And it looks like there's some water there it smells pretty bad from that direction too kind of like sewage no thank you hazel sticks her yeah, no. into the tunnel because that's just probably about as much as hazel can get into the tunnel <laughs> and just goes what you doing yeah you guys hear uh, calling from the tunnel to the north trying not to gag it smells gross there's two different ways we can go. Did you see the small troll creature come flying down the tunnel? I did. Is that who I think it is? Probably. I you may want to make sure to be sure. So I must ask, Forrest, Orcan, Orcon, and uh, Hazel, what do you guys want to do? You guys are... Stuck here on the other side of this tunnel. So, Orkan is currently staring at the pile of clothes that's on the floor. <laughs> and then looking at his lantern. Because Orkan doesn't have a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone pick up his clothes? <laughs> I can carry them, but he can't get them back until tomorrow. I can only access my inner plane once a day. Hazel, Not the best option, then. He um, tackles and gabs the clothes and goes, hee hee, finders keepers day for me. And just... <laughs> oh, no. 24 hours. <laughs> you take the clothes, give me the shoes. 
Okay. And Hazel gives the shoes. And then I, uh, Orkin, is going to proceed to walk through the water. Wait, you're oh, you going the head, other way? You're going in the water? Yep, I'm just going to... Uh, if Hazel can't fit through the crawl space, I'm assuming she's going to go through the water too, so... Uh, I, look I at thought me. with a bit more work, we could make enough room for all of us. Uh, or can, do, you, I, do you bleed? I, I can I can do a thing. It's okay. Are you sure? I don't want to put you out. It's. I'll, I'll be okay. I think. Okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. So Odd already ran to the south and cannonballed into the water. Well, before before you would do that, I would have to describe what's in that room so you guys can oh, see. So okay. Okay. Sorry. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because you can see some things in there. With my lack of dark vision, Selena. Has I mean, there, there are like there are lit torches like oh, okay. all around in here. Even so back like, here. Okay. yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, the the light there would be light, so you'd be able to see. Um, what um what you do see is this like well first of all like the stench hits you before you even see the water, uh it's terrible, and it rises from this murk mur this murky sewage that fills most of like this large chamber. But you can see in the chamber, in this sludge, there's three what look to be like four foot tall burbling masses that slink through the muck. Like they're just like, like slowly like moving through the sewage. How many, how many did you say? Three of them. Okay, there's a little yellow stain that comes on my Spider-Man undies. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm not jumping in that. Based on Forrest and Hazel thinking we can all fit, Orkin is going to take point for the remainder of us and is going to start squeezing himself in a little ways. But okay. then waiting to sort of signal for the others to follow behind. Okay. So we sort of all stick together. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tight fit. But you guys are able to start squeezing. Eventually, uh, there comes a time where each of you uh, start bumping some loose debris. I need all three of you to make dexterity saving throws for me oh, as you're squeezing go, through the tunnel. Oh no. Right. Now, you guys have a lot of things redeemed in chat. Uh, there's a D12 inspiration. You guys got two D6s, a D8. Uh, yeah. So you we can also decide. Have your proficiency bonus. Yeah, I don't think. Prof yeah, well, that uh, proficiency bonus only works on skill checks, it won't, it okay. won't work for our uh, saving throws. Oh, you can't add it to everything? <laughs> hey, does anybody pass? Nope. Yeah, Nick, Nicky's been I will, the I will say, um, I will tell you that, uh, Orcon, you were the only one who passed. Okay. <laughs> oh. I would say the other two, use up those things you got. Use those inspirations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according think, to... Uh, we said Chat, 1d12, 1d8, and 2d6 available. That's right. Yep, those are available right now, yep. Easel, I'd say use a big one. <laughs> and, you, and you guys are up to four uh, add your proficiency bonuses in the uh, in the bank. Um, uh, I guess I'll use the d8. Use the d8? Okay, and you just roll the d8 and you add it to your nine. Should I use the 12? How bad is I it? Would. <laughs> it? It ain't good. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so close. Oh I no! Yeah. Only a two. He can. Oh, he can't use the proficiency bonus to it, can he? No. 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 I tried. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm. I'm just. Gonna, we have a. We have a few one d sixes, right? Yeah. Have, two, two uh, yeah. Two. Uh, two of those. I'll just use a d6. But you need okay. like five. You'd need a five or a six, though. Here's the big one. You're the tallest. 
Okay, we're gonna keep getting these. Oh yeah, the chat chat's been uh, very generous in in providing these for you guys. Yeah, thank you, chat, for redeeming there these. Go. Well. Look five. at that! You got the five D twelve. Very good. And that's enough to succeed on the check as well. So as you're squeezing through uh, some debris falls, forest, unfortunately, some debris falls and slams you right on the back of your head as you are squeezing through the tunnel. Um, you are going to, you suffer uh, seven points of bludgeoning damage as rubble begins to kind of cave in on top of you and Orkon like, kind of turns around and kind of grabs you and kind of pulls you out of this rubble as it's falling in on you. I'm probably pushing him from behind because I was probably the last one to go, thinking I would be the one to collapse it behind us. <laughs> yes. so I'm just... so like a body shield? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, how close to the end are we when this starts falling? <clears throat> um, he's probably like right in the middle when it starts to fall. Yeah, but what's the probably distance? Pretty much right where, right where he is on the map. So however okay. just far that is, looks like uh, 5, 10, 15, my 20 feet from the end of it. Okay. Then can I do something to save him to prevent him from getting hurt? It depends on what it is. So as, <laughs> given we're all sort of stacked up and going through this, as I start to notice that the ground or the ceiling is starting to cave in on him, I am going to reach out and using my face step ability, I'm going to reach out and without saying a word to him, just grab his shoulder and just say, trust me, go. And I'm going to teleport him Let's 30 see. feet forward out of the tunnel. Okay, here's what I'll do. Since I like that, I'll let it happen. But is your face step a reaction spell or is it like a... No, it's a bonus action. To bonus action so in the future it will have to like like it wouldn't be a reaction so technically okay. it would be hard to do that but i'm gonna let it happen because i like the way you just did that role play and described that <laughs> and this is probably the first time that's happened to him right yeah and i want to see how he responds to it <laughs> <laughs> so you basically like throw him teleport style yep 30 feet forward and he's out probably Third. next to Selena. <laughs> yeah, you just all of a sudden like come to like bamf uh, right next to Selena holding the torch there. <laughs> and you don't have to moment, you don't have around. to take that that seven points anymore for us. I die. <laughs> You just hear oh. Hazel giggling down the tunnel, which probably sounds really weird as it echoes down the tunnel. I think so. You look alive to me. Oh. Well, there was a ceiling falling on me, and now I'm here. Oh, I didn't oh that it. worked. Wonderful. Um, Hazel, still laughing, like just catches up, moving slowly to Orkan and throws an arm around him. And <laughs> she's like, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried it when something's actually, like, you know, in the moment. It's usually much more planned out, and ooh, I've got to get upstairs. Yeah, that was kind of silly. I liked it. <laughs> Why is there a strange little boy playing in the pool? <laughs> it's the same boy we <laughs> saw run into the tunnel, remember? Oh, yes. Little boy, I have some shoes filled with rocks and sand. I found a gerbil. <laughs> I don't want to know where he found a gerbil in these caves. Probably not a gerbil. Organ's gonna come up and give him his shoes. Okay. Hazel is holding his clothes as high up as her hand will go. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have enough dark vision to see that? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so so what uh what do you guys want to do? What direction would you like to go? Hey, there's uh there's some nasties yeah. in the water over here. Hey, is I I see them, but right? oh, you see them? Are they? Are uh, they, they are bad. Which how do you know? No. Have you talked to them? 
Play as the no, eye, but just looking at them made me tinkle. So pretty sure they're not oh, friendly. No problem. Which way is the eye pointing? The eye is still pointing to the southwest. So Where's the tinkle monsters? Or we could. Or go we could just go west for now. South. Now it's more extreme. Like it's changed its orientation to be a little bit more west now. In your oh. where you're at. Hazel just points down the western tunnel. Just goes. This is fun. I don't want to go in the sewer water. Neither yeah, do I, yeah. but do we want the sewer water creatures coming after us from behind? Hey, but do you guys really want to be You guys are no fun. What did Odd say? I don't know. I switched back to my full, full, full glory, still naked. Nope. Closer still naked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna need those. Are you? <laughs> Uh, magic those word. creatures seem to take any notice of us at all. <laughs> What's the magic word? PG Make 13. an insight check for me, uh, Orton. Okay. I'll drop the clothes so Odd can get dressed because I don't want to see him in his tidy whities with a pee stain. Nope, that's just a zero. That's a zero. Rolled a zero. He rolled a zero. Uh, you have oh. no idea. <laughs> right. I really don't even know if they know we're here. I I say we go down this tunnel just because you guys have you ever? I mean, have you ever smelled wet furbolg, let alone wet stinky water furbolg? It's really not good. I'm 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 down for for whichever direction because we're just Hazel following starts... wherever the eyeball goes. So. Hazel starts going down the west. I'll just say those are the ones we can see. There's probably more in the water, so let's not go that way. Okay, I'll, I'll take point again because I can see in the dock. Okay. And start leading forward. So when you get to the end of this hallway, Orcon, since you can see, um, you find that it ends in what looks to be some sort of door. Hmm. Any sort of writing or symbols or anything on it? No. Hey, what's what's the hold up? Uh, there's a door of some kind here. What's well, it I mean, is it locked? Are, are you sure you're supposed to push and not pull? That that happens to me sometimes. No, I've decided I don't want to get exploded, so I haven't been started poking around yet. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try to take a look. Is there a way that I can tell if it's locked or uh, trapped or anything? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make a... Just go ahead and make a perception check for me. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Wow. You're rolling a lot of red numbers here tonight. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Is that actually yeah. rolling? You, or yeah. Something. I think he just rolled two ones in a row. <laughs> just, hold on. Let me just. For... Okay. No, yeah, it's yeah, working. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's yeah, a, yeah, that, you just you just rolled two natural ones. Yeah, you wasted yeah, your one good roll <laughs> Oh, you guys just got redeemed a player re-roll to the pool. Thank you, Christy. We can just go ahead and use that sixteen then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't see anything that would say it was trapped. Like, you're not even sure if it's locked or not. Looks good. Gonna try to open it. All right. You push it. It opens up. And you guys can see uh, what you see there beyond there, Orcon. That um, looks like a lot of teeth. <laughs> uh, you can see a stone gold-painted sarcophagus that rests in the center of this tomb. The sides of the sarcophagus bear a relief depicting two women gazing lovingly over a field 
and a city. And the lid has a faintly distinguishable family crest carved into it. Old weapons and decorated armor line the walls of uh, line the walls of this room. There are a few torches that are lit in here as well. Is that good? Good? good gold? <laughs> no, it is uh, not. Hazel um. <laughs> stares at the crest on the tomb. Does it look familiar? To anything we've seen in Neverwinter? Uh, make a history check for me, please. <sighs> is that open to anyone? I uh, yeah, if, if you're inspecting the crest and you'd like to make a history check, you may. Mm-hmm. I miss Rowan and Calcico. Oh. Yeah. Not familiar to Hazel. Um, um, I gave myself disadvantage because I'm not originally from around here, so mine's a 10. <laughs> a 10 is surprisingly enough is still good enough. Okay. Um, look. It's like right. Eight, yeah, that's an eight. So, uh, Selena, you don't really recognize the symbol. It seems that Selena and Hazel are the only two that don't. Uh, engraved on this lid, you guys see it's a it's a coat of arms. It's depicting a blunted six point crown. And you guys that have made the check recognize that this is a symbol of the Hall Winter family, whose lineage produced renowned knights throughout the entire Sword Coast. So it is gold. Morgan is going to immediately start pushing Odd towards the exit of the room over here. (laughs) um, You can see Odd. It's it's gold, but it's painted gold. So it's like. It's kind of like it's they're trying to they're It's yeah, they're making themselves look like it's made to look even better than what it really is. Yeah, so as he's dragging me off, I'm trying to hug on to sarcophagus and my nails accidentally scrape the gold off. And it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, never mind. (laughs) I don't care about this damn thing. Back back into the corner and kicking rocks. (laughs) Okay, so we found it. What's the eye doing? Hazel pulls up the eye. The eye is pointing uh more directly southwest okay well we can't go that way right now so hazel just do 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 ahead with her torch in one hand and the eye in the other i'm right behind you oh somebody's on top of me (laughs) um forest one thing that you would probably notice being in this room (laughs) is that while most of the items like weapons and armor that kind of like are decorated and line the walls in this room are kind of rusted and dilapidated and look like they've seen many years, uh, there is one shield that remains completely intact. No rust on it at all. I'll step up to it, just take like a closer look. Oh, yeah. I mean, it looks like a pretty nice shield. Uh, I mean, I assume down here there's just layers and layers of dust on everything. Yeah. Like, no one's been down here in who knows how long. Oh, yeah. This stuff doesn't look like it's been, like, manipulated or moved around that much. Any, any symbols of anything on the shield? No. Orkin. Yes. What do you think of the shield over here on the wall? I'll come over and uh, take a look. It looks red. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does look red, what? but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so uh, you already told for us, so there's no like emblems or any sort of markings on it or anything? Not really any iconography on it at all. It's just compared to all the rest of the items in this room, like this one seems to have like stood the test of time. Um, can we roll Morgan's anything? Gonna, Morgan's gonna, very... um, what would you like to roll? 
well, from from the distance that I'm 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 at, I definitely can't do investigation because it's not in like my hand. But can I do? I don't know. Is there like a symbol or crest that history would would blink off of, or uh, on the uh, shield? No. Yeah. Yeah, not from my distance. I can't really do anything. Uh, hey, thanks, to... Vic, for the subscription. We appreciate that. Orkin is going to very carefully, almost reverently, reach out and I'll wipe his hands off, very gingerly touch the sides of the shield, mm -hmm. and ever so carefully lift it a little bit, looking okay. at the shelf where it's been sitting on. Mm -hmm. Is there dust underneath it? Or is underneath it where the base of it was touching the ground? Is it clean? Like, does it look like someone put this here after the fact, or has it been resting here since? The... It seems to you, without even making a roll, that this has been here since. So, looking at that and looking over at, uh, back over at Forrest, uh, there is something about this. It's, it, it, if you look and he'll gesture to the space where it was sitting, you can see there's dust everywhere around it, but where it was touching the shelf, there's no dust underneath the base. It's been sitting here as long as everything else has. But there's no dust, there's no wear, there's no rust. There is something unique about this. Uh, I think this might be useful. Uh, I'm going to bring it with us. Okay. Um, just just okay. add the uh, the shield to your character sheet. I will give you more information about it later. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the subscription, Camacho. Thanks, Camacho. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Orkin will look at uh, look at Forrest as he's taking the shield. Like. Uh, we may know that this is something special about it, but we don't know what. If you are taking it from the place of honor that this family placed it in, I will expect that you will at least pay the family going rate for a standard shield upon our payment from Lord Neverember. Ah, seems fair to me. There's a little nod and then we go oh, yeah. catch back up with Hazel. Oh, uh, thanks, Derek, for the subscription. Oh, gifted a uh, anonymous gifter. Oh, anonymous gifter gave uh, Derek a subscription. Thank you, guys. Tough night. <laughs> Starting off a campaign right. <laughs> All right, Hi. so, yeah, Forrest grabs the shield. Uh, anything else you guys want to look at in here or move on or where else would you like to go? Hazel's already gone. Hazel's already gone? Okay. And um, Orkin's chasing Oh, and she's already left, hasn't and, she? Yeah. And uh, Hazel, I want you to stop right there, because as you get to that room, something happens. Uh-oh. Um, so first of all, I'm going to put a uh, put a little token on the map so you guys can see what uh, appears in front of you. As something starts to kind of rise out of this, like, drain in the middle of the room. And you can see all around the room, there's uh, glossy urns and uh, cinerary boxes that line the walls of this vaulted rotunda. Uh, drifting in the center of the room, kind of rising up out of this drain, is a ghostly, transparent, humanoid figure. The figure is clad in plate armor, but where the head of this figure should be is instead a featureless, luminescent orb. And that's where we're going to take our break for the evening. Hello, and thank you so much for hanging out with us here at Proficiency Bonus. Please take an opportunity to support our sponsors. First up is Little Dragon Corp. Little Dragon Corp is an online storefront based in the great white north of Canada. They sell everything your heart could desire, so long as everything your heart desires is largely polyhedral dice sets and other TTRPG sundries. Check them out for all of your dicey needs. Perhaps buy a lovely hardcover copy of one of these fine books. If you're feeling especially cute, 
you could treat yourself to a t-shirt or one of these fine little proprietary Little Dragon Corp Dragon plushies. They've got all the classic types of dragon, like Mooney, Terra, Dad, whatever strikes your fancy over on Little Dragon Corp, be sure to enter our special promo code BONUS at checkout for 15% off of your order. That's BONUS, B-O-N-U-S, for 15% off your order. That's like if you made seven individual purchases, you could basically buy anything you want on the store and it's like it was free with all the money that you saved from earlier. I'm absolutely positive that's how math works and I will be taking no questions at this time. Thank you, Little Dragon Corp. Cardboard Castle Games is a brick and mortar game store local to Evans, Georgia. They have a wide selection of tabletop gaming and other cool games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon cards, and even Yu-Gi-Oh! You can visit them in-store and let them know that we sent you, or you can go visit their website at cardboardcastlegames.com. Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Discord. Links to our social media pages and outlets are located below this video. Don't forget, you can also support the channel by following, by subscribing, remembering to click the bell notification so you never miss another live stream, using channel emotes, and if you're an Amazon Prime user, you get a free subscription to Twitch every month. While we are away, now is a great time to go subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free, and there you will find hours upon hours of content to enjoy. Click the bell icon to activate notifications so you won't miss a single show. Once again, thank you for joining us. We hope you are enjoying the show, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Welcome back, everybody. So, Hazel just walked into a room in a ghostly image formed with an orb, a blank orb for a head. What do you guys do? Odd would like to scream. Oh, no, it's the ghost of a lamp. <laughs> Hazel. Uh, My lamp does not have a ghost. Hazel no. smiles at the figure and still holding the eye pretty obviously just goes do you know where we're supposed to be going? This eye doesn't talk. Just straight at the ghost. Gosh, I don't know. I don't know where it is that you're going. In fact, I don't even know who I am. Well, I'm Hazel. Well, Self-discovery. Hi, Hazel. That's such a nice name. My mommy gave it to me. I wish I could remember the name I was given. How about we give you a name? Don't let him name you, which he points at Odd. Lamp. Smack. I smack Odd over the head. <laughs> I'm gonna step around to the side of Odd. Uh... I, I love Lamp. <laughs> what was the name of that family from the crest on the sarcophagus over here? Oh, I'll, um... I'll see if the character. If, uh, the... I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Which you guys Paul Winter. Is Paul, Winter. Notes? <laughs> Paul Winter family. Are you one of the Hall Winters? Hall Winter? Oh, well, yes, that does sound familiar. Lamp Hall, Hall Winter. Winter. No, Lamp isn't my name. I would remember if it was. Is there a name on the back of the shield? Are you taking a closer look? Yeah. Okay, you kind of look at the shield. There's there's no name on it. <sighs> Damn it. I mean, I did <laughs> the same thing with my lunchbox, so it's a good, it's a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> did anybody look at the sarcophagus for inscriptions? Or eat it? No, we were too busy trying to keep odd from scavenging it. Um, Hazel moves closer to the grate, like standing opposite the ghost. Okay. Um, and just continues to look up at it. Uh, do you need help of any kind? I don't know how I could help, but it seems lonely down here. It is very lonely. I just wish I remembered who I was. Maybe we can help. Could you? Could you help restore my identity? We can try. How I'm really... I've been here for quite some time. Hall Winter. I remember Hall Winter. All winter is my name, but there's more to it. The echo in the room is crazy. I'm gonna hold up the shield. Does this look familiar to you? Hey, Stumpy. That does look familiar to me, but I must warn you. I feel some terrible aura resonating from that item. Something doesn't feel right. You should be careful with that. Well, it is an ominous eyeball, I mean... From the eye or from the shield? Pretty sure she put the eyeball. Both. Oh! oh. <laughs> Do they belong together? No. Yeah, the, shield. the shield was once mine, 
I believe. You see that the ghost kind of gestures towards this, like, plate mail that they're wearing? Seems to fit my aesthetic. I'm almost afraid to ask, but... Where's your head? What's wrong What's with my head? head? It's very oh, good. Thank you. It's, it's, it's How can you just get up their head? Okay. Is something is something wrong with it? Your face is blank, per and maybe perfect. it's because you don't remember who you are. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, hey, you're telling me we have to look at it. Orkin is going to shove Bod. <laughs> Hazel <laughs> to high five Orkin later. Um, <laughs> and just looking up at the ghost goes, if we find out your name, maybe you you'll remember and then you'll remember what you looked like and then your face will come back. This isn't that hey, strange. I've seen weirder things. That's a good it's idea. Fine. You think that would work? I mean, there's only one way to find out. Um... Do, do you know anything about what else is down here? I don't really remember. Having a hard time remembering it. Odd is gonna slink back from mm. this conversation and kind of slide down the hall. And back to the sarcophagi, <laughs> and I'm okay. just gonna just gonna give Selena a look like, come on, let's 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 try to look inside this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna go follow him. For okay. I imagine it's probably too heavy for a mere caster with negative one strength. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going back and kind of looking around uh, in this area once again. Um, well, I'm thinking try to lift the lid or slide it off to look in. Okay. We touch, is there anything like written on it? Do we? Did somebody ask that already? Yeah, well, I think it was like a crest, is what we saw, and that's what okay. gave us the Hall Winter name. But other than that, I don't think we saw anything. Okay. I don't know if we looked for anything though either. Not that I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, either of you can make investigation checks if you'd like, or if you just want, if you want to try to, uh, to open the the sarcophagus, you can. Um, that's like your choice. Investigation. Investigation. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. See anything on what, your side? What, mm. Why does her rolls keep showing up too? What is that about? Uh, hers are set to always roll advantage. So the first roll would be oh. her first roll, and then it always rolls two dice regardless. I usually set mine okay. up that way too, so that way I don't have to roll twice. I can just roll one time. Oh, um, that's cool. Um, you guys uh, looking around, like you think you found everything there is to find, like in this room. There's not really any more clues. You can remember the sides of the sarcophagus do bear like a relief. It's depicting two women and they're kind of gazing lo lo lovingly over a field and a city. And then the lid had that family crest of the hall winters on top of it. So you're suggesting that looking inside is not going to help at all. I mean, you can if you want. It's up to you. Would your character have any uh, ill um, or bad feelings about disturbing the final resting place of an individual? Wouldn't think twice. <laughs> Wouldn't think twice about it. <laughs> okay, so odd. You start to kind of push open the sarcophagus. It, it starts like pushing uh, clear a little bit, and you can kind of see inside. Like it's musty and just smells terrible. And there definitely is uh, uh, a skeletal corpse uh, still present in here. Selena, could, could you shine your torch a little bit in there? Let's do that. I can't see in the dark like that. <laughs> <Goggled guy. laughs> yeah, I'm 
putting the torch up there, looking all around. I mean, anything that's in here is like rotted away or dried to a point where it's just kind of crumbling into dust. So with an investigation of 14, um, am, I, am I seeing like these these are skeletons clearly by now, right? Yep. Everything's already decayed. By the, Everything is the decayed, yes. The, by the size of the skeleton, both humanoid? Uh, there's one skeleton, humanoid. Mm-hmm. Oh, it has its one, head, right? But, but just two, one. Two, two it does have its head. On the outside. Okay. Yep, yep. It's just the the relief on there is some something decorative on the outside. It's only a single sarcophagus for a single person. And no no identifying like jewelry or anything fancy that I could slowly but surely put in my pocket. <laughs> Not in here, no. No, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess slide it back to being closed and uh, come join the others and I guess remind... <laughs> Remind Hazel that there was a an inscription of two women on the on the lid. Okay. Uh, Hazel nods. Goes, oh yeah, I missed that. I wasn't paying attention when we were in there. And she looks. <laughs> at the uh, in in the room back there, there's a, a resting place, and and there's old bones in there. We don't know if they're your bones, but there's two women on the cover. Do you remember? A woman that you knew in life? Maybe that'll give us a clue as to who you were? Mm. I wish I could remember. She loved you to death. Hazel smacks off. She, she, she loved she loved me? Well, we don't we don't we don't know that, but we're assuming by proximity of resting place to where you showed up, it, it could be yours, but I, I, I don't know how things work here, so we're just looking for clues. Do, what what do you remember other than what we've helped you remember of being a hall winter? Do you remember anything about your life? No, just that hall winter name. Thank you for bringing me that. I, Hazel looks at Orcan for a second and is like I might say something bad I mean, I'm apologizing silently uh, as well, you look over at Orkin you can see he's still eyes on this ghost but has been slowly stepping sideways remembering that our path was directing to the west and is trying mm-hmm. to sort of sneak a gaze and look down this hallway to it Okay, Orkin, are you going to go ahead and try to gaze down there? Yep. Why don't you just go ahead and move your character five feet diagonally, and what you see down there is what you get. Alrighty then. <laughs> Orkin, <Orkin's> well, <laughs> <laughs> that's an just, evil DM laugh right there. Just kind there. of uh, uh, creepy, shambling figures that are kind of moping around, like just uh, wandering aimlessly uh, in that chamber down farther. They don't is... seem to react oh, to me, though? They don't seem to react to you right this second, no. Oh, okay. They probably oh. can't see as far as you can. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> tell. Orkan <laughs> yeah. uh, is just going to put his hand out towards the group and just sort of go without paying any attention to what's going on back there and just sort of go <laughs> <laughs> Hazel just does it. Aud would like to test something out. So approaching this mysterious hall winter ghost, I'm going to pull out a silver coin and try to hand it to her. Okay. Does it work? It does not. It does not. It falls through. It falls through. And honestly, right. as you try to like, I, I, she's not really like even like, looking towards you and doesn't even like really hold out a hand like you would kind of, like she's hovering kind of above the floor so you could kind of like set it on her foot and it was just like fall through so she cannot physically carry objects all right i was thinking we could return the shield and something might happen but i quickly scoop up the silver coin because i'm frugal <laughs> gotcha <laughs> forrest what were you saying <laughs> 
I was going to say, it's hard to tell from here, but that room behind the ghost. So I want to ask the ghost, um, do you know what's in that room uh, behind you over there? I believe it's another resting place, but I'm not sure of who. Well, uh, if, if it's anything like the one we just came out of, that, either that one or the one we were in could be yours. Could be worth a look. I'll come with you, Forrest. As Odd starts yeah. coming over towards Orchid, he starts slapping him and pushing him away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to still keep coming closer, like, what you doing? What are you doing? You don't what's, want what's... to be here. Like, Orcon like and dark. Odd, you guys both start hearing a sound that sounds like this. I don't have dark vision, but um, nope, 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 nope. nope. There's a reason nope. I'm standing here. Nope, nope, nope. nope. Just gonna keep going in a circle. <laughs> so, Forrest, <laughs> Forrest and Selena, you guys are making your way up those steps. There are lit torches in this room as well, so you guys are able to see fairly uh, easily. Uh, the smell of old parchment fills this tomb. Bookshelves carrying various tomes and scholarly implements stand against the walls. At the center is a stone gold-painted uh, sarcophagus, the sides of which bear a beautiful relief carving of two humanoid women exploring a forest together. So what were the two women doing in the last one? They were just like... Field in the cuddling? city. They were looking oh, over field. a field to this city beyond. City beyond, and then going through a forest in this one. So there's lots of parchment and like scrolls and books around here. Oh yeah, I would definitely like to investigate, see if I can find anything on them. Okay, perfect. Um, as you're kind of like going over the the bookshelves. You can see, like, sitting on one of the shelves, kind of like almost like a little above your eye level, there's a heart shaped golden locket that sits on one of the shelves. And it's much like the shield, perfectly intact. Uh, you know, it's covered in dust, but it looks like it's in good shape. I'm going to pick it up, look for anything okay. written on it. Okay, you immediately get struck by... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you pick it up. Uh, it's on a nice, kind of thin, fine chain. Um, it's definitely... It's, it's gold and heart-shaped. It's in the palm of your hand. feels kind of light. Uh, you guys also... You do notice that uh, nestled on, on, on these bookshelves are... You can see there's five incense sticks... That could be worth some money, or for some usage for uh, rituals and things like that. You find a component pouch, and make an investigation check for me too, as you're kind of going through all this stuff. Oh, I, I had already rolled one, so do you want me to roll? Oh, you already, uh, it would be the fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah, it was for the component pouch. Okay, so yeah, so five incense sticks and component pouch are what you guys kind of like, as you guys are kind of exploring this area, fine. And I lost you for a second. There was nothing written on the locket at all? Um, Nothing looked like, nothing you can see on the locket, but it does look like it definitely is an open, it can, it can open. Uh, I'll try to open it. Okay. Um, so what I need you to do to try to open this, it can be pried open with a strength athletics check, or if you have sleight of hand using thieves tools, you could use that to try to open it up. Oh, athletic is what I've got. Okay. <laughs> All right. With a little bit of prying, you were able to successfully pry this open forest, uh, inside is a small portrait of a human woman, next to which is the inscription, My Dearest Chanel. 
I'm going to turn to Selena and I... Th uh, so I think this... The ghost is in the armor. And here it looks more like... A wizard's... Uh, equipment. So if this was the wizard's locket, her name should be... Chanel. The, the woman, the ghost. We should go ask her. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna head back into the open room. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back. There was scary sounds down that hall. We're not... <laughs> we'll deal with that. Is That's Orkan just standing at the end of that hallway still? Just like... <laughs> just, just watching to see if they start moving towards us. Yep, they're just kind of like aimlessly milling about. Like one's doing the traditional like drag the right foot around the room. <sighs> you know? And you guys return to the main room. Mm -hmm. So I found this uh, locket over there with the name uh, Chanel inscribed on it. Does that mean anything to you? Chanel. Wait. Chanel. Chanel Hallwinter. Chanel Hallwinter's my name. And it's at that moment where you see that empty orb of a head starts to glow in this mystical, like, uh, ethereal vortex of energy starts to spin a little bit you can see these flowing kind of braided hair locks kind of fall down uh to her sides and she starts to take the form of a very beautiful looking middle-aged female human woman oh my mm -hmm. god very nice to meet and then he changes yeah. into looking just like her i could do that too <laughs> <laughs> you have a ghostly version and you have the odd version <laughs> standing in the room. <laughs> Hazel Hair just toss. smiles up at who we now know to be Chanel and just says, now your face is back. You look like this. That's why he did it, I think, to be kind of like a mirror. But he's also just a little strange. I'm odd. That's, that's, strange. that's what I look like. That's me. That's mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. Thank you for restoring my identity. Do you remember anything else? Now that you know your name? I do. I do. It seems that the memories are coming back to me now. What is it that you need to know? Um, a few... Hazel starts to look unsure of what order she wants to go in and it just starts staring off into the distance like there's so many questions because in her head this ghost knows everything so she just zones out and leaves it for somebody else to get actual answers uh i think she needs a moment but you mentioned something about uh your shields there was something wrong with it yes yes that shield uh, so recently over the last few months, a cult has started to make its home here. And many of these areas have become desecrated. That item is cursed. The desecration has affected it. But since you helped to restore my identity, I can help with that. And she starts to, like, raise her hands and she starts to, like, kind of almost, like, uh, move her hands in a, in a, in a, in a strange kind of arcing motion. And then she points kind of directly to, to you, uh, Forrest, with both arms, like, outstretched. And then she goes like this one more time. And you don't feel anything different. You don't, like, there's nothing that seems like anything changes. And then she looks at you and is like, I fixed it. It is no longer cursed. It will only benefit you in your travels. Thank you. I'll, uh... I'll remember you every time. It helps me out. So, mechanically, that shield is a plus one magical shield. 
I wish you would have attuned to it before. Almost like <laughs> a paladin knows not to just randomly quit things. He found it. That's, that's all right. That's right. I know. <laughs> I hope it protects you. Are there... oh, tell the one wandering down the hall to be very careful. The crypt to the south of the rotunda was desecrated and now is swarming with undead zombies. I, I yell after Orc in, in, a, in, a, in a volume that's way too loud. Hey! Be careful, there's zombies! I can see them, you fool! Oh. Get back here. As you yell that, Orkon, uh, that one that's like lumbering there towards the wall, like slowly stops. It looks like it's about ready to turn its head towards you, and then it starts just kind of lumbering again. <laughs> you really shouldn't yell in these tunnels, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Good. Is there a. Uh... Is there a way past them? Through them. I'm not really sure. They're not very perceptive. And they're not intelligent. So maybe... We could just pretend to be zombies and shuffle past them. Huh? Huh? They would probably devour your flesh. Looks like a zombie. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're probably right. Sorry. When she says that, I draw my sword. Okay. I'm gonna look at Hazel. Should we just clean this out and be done with it? Um, I'm down. Hazel turns and looks at Selena and Forrest and goes, Are you guys up for some playtime? Yeah. They were mean to her. That can't be <laughs> forgiven. But... I don't like zombies down here, and she said the cult's been down here, so. Maybe this is where the eye came from. We could check to see which one's missing an eye. Ooh, that's a grand idea. Let's do this. Or we can add eyeballs. Could make eyeballs. Are we doing this? Is Forrest on board? And I haven't heard from him. I don't see another way through, unfortunately. Is, that, is the eye pointing down this hallway still, too? From where you're standing... The eyeball is pointing slightly southeast. Mm. Okay. Back the other way through the oozes. I I don't want to go through the oozes. I don't want to smell bad. Hod, Hod is going to uh, shape shift into forest and try to <laughs> okay. try to try to try to copy his voice in Lathander's name. Onward. <laughs> to glory <laughs> forward Hazel today turn <laughs> Hazel turns and looks at the ghost Chanel goes if we die down here can I stay with you I don't want to stay with him do you not see how luscious sure I'd be okay with the company do you okay. not see how luscious my red locks are and my chiseled chiseled beard <laughs> come <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm. But, uh... <laughs> oh, I Rushing know. I have not know where I didn't think I did. <laughs> Orkin's going to look at Hazel and just say, I think we have to go this way as we came from the southeast. Unless we want to go back and go through the water. Don't... No, I do think this is the better way. You guys don't. And we can lay them back to rest as we water. go. You really don't want me going through that water. And... I and Orkin's going to look back at the group and just uh, uh, sort of go. <laughs> and then if no one's up, Orkin's going to cast I'm, a spell. But here's what we'll do. On three, we're going to roll initiative. 
<laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull up a turn order. And what you guys should be able to do is you should be able to click on your tokens and just click the button initiative that pops up in the top corner of your roll 20 map. And it should automatically populate our initiative order. I'm hoping that my um, roll 20 uh, API is gonna work correctly to where I can just group initiative for my zombies and it should populate all my zombies on the map too. Uh, it messed up for me because remember I changed to Helson. Uh, it shouldn't have any impact on the name of yours. Yeah, it says no character found Guidani Malade. Did you click on your token first? On my token? Yeah, you gotta click on your token first. So you click on where it's on the token. Wait, no, I want, sure. yeah, my, my, my token has been selected. The entire okay. And then you click initiative in the top left hand corner. And it's not still, working. still no character found for Guidani. Okay. What? Uh, okay. Just go ahead and um, click on your token, and then open your character sheet. And there should be an initiative in the middle of your character sheet. Just go ahead and click it that way, and it should uh, populate you that way. It just it's right. just an, an extra click. So. I like how it seems to have averaged your zombies' rolls, so they all yeah. are not whole numbers. I don't know why it d it does that on this uh, group initiative yet. Oh. I haven't figured that out because on the on the uh, I thought it was because I had like the dex modifier to break ties clicked, but it's not clicked on their character sheets, so I don't know what's doing that. Oh, there you go. Did it put that on? Yeah, there you go. So if I put these in order, all right. Let's give us some. Let's give us some good music. I am dead last, something you'll probably see a lot. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put um a Yeah, that 19 was the, the best roll I'm gonna make all night. Get something a little bit action packed here. Okay. Alright, hey uh odd, you are uh, as you see like Orcon doing the, the countdown and the one zombie like at the doorway going mm -hmm. <laughs> You get to go first. What would you like to do? All right, so what are, what are we doing? Five uh five feet per block. Five feet squares, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do five, ten, fifteen, twenty, oh, twenty-five nice. right here into the doorway. Uh, yep. Sorry in advance, I, on. <laughs> Sorry in advance. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see my range on this. All right, I am going to pull my deck of cards out of my pocket. It's my spell focus. I am going to cast Mirage Image as I pull out a card and I said to the zombies, is this your card? I really need you to focus and everything starts going blurry as I spread into three different images. Oh, of my spell. cast some blur on yourself. Uh, mirror image. Mirror, mirror image, gotcha. Mirror yeah. image, yep. Mirror image. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. There you go. Perfect, yeah. Um, after that, bonus action. I'm gonna use my hidden ace. Let's say this one right back here. Do I have line of sight on him? Um, or would, would you can, rather can, this can you see him from with your token? As long as you can see him, half of his token. then yeah, you, you've got line of sight. Okay, I'm gonna look at him directly. And I'm going to show him the card, and I'm going to say, is this your card? And on the card is actually artwork of him attacking the other zombies in the room as <laughs> I cast Crown of Madness on him. Okay, and that, that, that ability allows you to use that as a bonus action? Uh, the Hidden Ace. Hidden Ace, okay. Gotcha. All right. DC 13 wisdom saving throw. I can do that. Yep, that was it. So wisdom save. Gonna fail. Awesome. So he now is under the effects of crown of madness. Crown of madness. Gotcha. Gonna find a good crown image if I can. I thought there was a crown on here. Oh. Where'd you come from? I'm still there. All right, does that end your turn on? Yeah, that's going to be it for me. All right, Orcon, you're up next.
Uh, odd, 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 odd. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Orkin's gonna call up. Um, Odd, how many are up there with you? One. Yeah, I'm not very good at math, man. Um, God, this sucks. <laughs> I, uh, it's it's, it's about half, 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 half of a uh, half of one of those those uh, dozen things. Half of the dozen. Yo, know, I, I don't know what. Oh boy. So, <laughs> Odd is not being much help in telling me what we're dealing with. I think it's six. So, six, right? Half of a dozen is six. <laughs> I, think. <sighs> I think six. All right, so 5, 10, 15, <coughs> 20. Okay, so Hawkins going to come up like this. Okay. Immediately Squeezing turn into the room. Huh? Yep. Yep. Coming into the room, immediately going. Damn it, Odd, you need to learn how to count. <laughs> <laughs> and. Definitely, definitely, more than, definitely. definitely more than six. <laughs> definitely more on, than six. It's, it's on my list. It's on my list of things to do. Okay. And it is going to then picking a point. Uh, let's see. Let's, there we go. A second just to make sure of what I'm doing here. Okay. Radius. Oh. So picking a point right here right above this pillar mm -hmm. and is casting darkness oh gosh in a 15 foot sphere or sorry foot radius foot sphere. yeah so basically you're gonna get this whole half of the room okay basically you gotcha yep gotcha uh michael let's uh <laughs> let's let's strike off that crown of madness uh didn't realize that one of the details is it has to be a humanoid, so. Gotcha. Yep, so that wouldn't affect the zombie. Yeah. Mm -mm. All right, so darkness, so that magical darkness, so the room kind of just goes black. Yep. And anything else, Orcon? <laughs> that is basically... That is misshapen. I misjudged that a little. One, two, three, one, two. Yeah. It's okay. I can pull it. It's probably be more like that. Yep. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So. So that, that's pitch then, um, black in there. Yep. And then I think that is. Yep. That's all I'm doing at that point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I just realized I never, never left forest's form, so I am a mirror three, image three, of three, three forests. Forest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, zombie number five gets to go, uh, but I don't believe they can see in magical darkness. Mm -hmm. So it's lumbering around in there aimlessly. Um, just moving about. Mm -hmm. Um, it bumps into a pillar and moves in the other direction for a little while. Zombie number eight gets to go. Uh, zombies aren't smart. It moves towards the black orb, uh, kind of skates around it and then just like disappears into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really know what to do. Can't see anything. Uh, zombie six does the same. Mm, lumbers around. Zombie number one can't see, but knew that Orcon like moved up next to it before you cast the spell. 
So he's going to attempt to slam you with disadvantage. Uh, so let's see. We'll do a slam attack. Oh, uh, natural one. <laughs> <laughs> So out of this, like, you're, like, seeing the edge of the blackness orb. You can see these <laughs> zombie hands, like, come out and then just go right back into the, the darkness of the orb. I can see through it. Oh, yeah, you can. You, oh, you have you have the ability to see through magical darkness, yeah. don't you? Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see it's, like, trying to, like, slam at you and slap at you and doesn't even get close. Um, stays put. Zombie number two is next to go. Uh, lumbers around. Zombie number three is in the darkness, lumbers around. Uh, we'll just kind of make it move over there. Uh, Hazel, you're up. Okay. Um, Hazel. Oh, another D12 inspiration redeemed. Oh boy. Hazel just goes, ah, dang it, and moves up to stand right, like looking over Odd's shoulder. Mm hmm essentially and is going to over his shoulder uh cast flaming sphere that's a tall lady okay um and it's a i can it's a 60 foot range for me a five foot uh sphere of fire and any creature that ends its turn within five feet of that sphere must make a dex throw i want to drop it on the far side of the room. I don't know where Orkan went, but um Do you me. have to be able to see where you're putting it? Thanks. Yeah, that's the bad part about <laughs> the darkness. Yeah. Cause most spells require you to be able to see uh unoccupied space of your choice within range. So I don't I guess maybe if I can't tell if it's unoccupied. But um Just as it of your choice. Yep, yeah. I would say of your choice. So yeah, if it doesn't say it doesn't specifically say in the text that you have to see it, that's fine. Yeah, so uh, I throw that in there, and that's a concentration spell for me. Um, so anytime, it's just a ball of fire in the darkness that none of us can see. Okay. But again, I'm assuming Orkan wouldn't have gone in too far, and I just call out fire in the hole, so that everyone on our team knows that there's a ball of fire in there. Okay. And then Hazel just kind of smirks and goes, see ya. And she imitates Odd with a snap. And she turns into a wolf. Using a Nice. So I can wild shape into a wolf? And then wild shape into a wolf. To fight Excellent. once the darkness goes away, if it goes away. Okay. Violet Sanders Light. She stole <laughs> my thing. <laughs> no, Fantastic can't communicate further with anybody but if there's a ball of fire she can move around the room and she's wolf. got it okay <laughs> so i will get a wolf token out there uh selena it is your turn so am i starting my movement from where i'm at now or do i move closer before? yes unfortunately the three two one countdown was rather fast and uh everybody was where they are when they started <laughs> so. okay i just want to make sure i'm not cutting through hmm so I'm going to move my 25 movement feet and I'm not going to be you were tiny. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to be close enough to attack anybody yet. But you could um yeah. yeah you could dash, but it's going to be hard to get like get in the room and now that everything is pitch black, it's really really hard. Yeah. So I'm just gonna hang out where I'm at now um, and see kind of what happens because okay. I might be able to like dash underneath people's legs but I don't want to run into a pillar because <laughs> that sounds par for the course in darkness <laughs> for me <laughs> gotcha um, zombie 7 lumbers into the darkness and just disappears into the blackness of the magical aura of darkness. Join the group. <laughs> Zombie 4. Lumbers around um, a little bit. Does get close to Odd. 
So we're gonna make a slam with disadvantage. I think it has to roll a d20 first, though. Yep. Uh, a seven. Must roll a six or higher to change the attack target to a duplicate. So, yeah, it would be attacking a duplicate. Attacking a duplicate? So slam with yeah. disadvantage is only a five, so it's going to miss anyway. <laughs> As it tries to reach out towards one of your forest-like du duplicates. Uh, forest, it is your turn. Well, uh, I'm gonna start by moving into this room and finally see what the hell is happening in here. Oh, yeah, it's, it's oh, terrible wait. because it's like a cramped hallway of all your friends and then nothing but darkness. <laughs> correction, <laughs> correction, be... Michael. A quick correction. Uh, I'm the one that rolls the d20, and if I get a six or higher, it rolls. It hits the duplicate. Okay. Well, we can we can we'll do that do next, time. next time. Yeah. 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 Okay. All I did was click on the d20 in that little box, and it worked. So it was good. Okay. All right. What you want to do, Forrest? Uh, well, can't actually see anybody. Any enemies? <laughs> I know it's nuts. So I <laughs> am going to cast bless on myself Selena and uh, odd okay so his self twice ah. <laughs> <Violet Andrew laughs> you've been blessed which, which ones of you because there are five of you out there right now I'm, I'm just, saying. just Put this little shield token on your uh, characters, so I remember that you guys have a uh, blessing. You guys have been blessed by Lathander. Uh, Michael, real quick, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna move my Hazel token away for now, because there's I, a wolf token for me. That's fine. Just make sure you. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's fine. I just didn't know where I it would. Can't, can't can't, wolf, I, I need. Yeah. I need to give you access to the wolf. Uh, let's give you vision and represents or wait, uh, controlled by here's what I need. Uh, boom. Now you should be able to control that wolf token, hopefully. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So forest cast bless anything else. Uh, I'll just move up into this space here. I suppose that's I'll end my turn there. Okay, perfect. Uh, top of the next order odd. So this this one that attacked me, since since it attacked me, I, I imagine it could see me. So can I see it? Um, you don't know if it can see you. Um, oh, it just swung blindly. <laughs> they're just like like swimming, swinging their arms around. Uh, <laughs> they can't see anything. They're just the arms come out. <laughs> that's it. You know, there's something there. It's a hand. It's, uh, it's the desiccated fleshy hand like came out and tried to smack you, smack the wall instead. <laughs> Yeah, everything everything's gonna require sight, so this this <laughs> this, this darkness really. Is on the turn. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. darkness oh, and fight. Oh, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to look into the darkness and hope to God that Orkin is not in the way. Sorry, buddy. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> As I release an entire deck of cards and a 15 foot cone forward into the darkness, it's okay. going to be a dex 13 save. Let's see here. There we go. It would have to come from you. So you're going to get one, two, three, four of the zombies. I think. You said it's a deck save? Yeah, dex 13. I'm going to try to use this uh, other IP that I have and see if this works. Dexterity save. DC is a 13. Yes, sir. Uh, submit. Uh, what would the damage be? Is that 7? Yep, 7. So 7. Submit. Is it half on a save, or does it, if it saves, it's all good? Uh, looks like it's half on a save. Let me go. On a successful save, a creature takes half as much damage. Okay, yep. Oh, there they go. There's the saves. All right, so yep. the three that <laughs> failed are blinded as well. 
Not that they could they, see in the darkness, anyways. <laughs> they all, they're uh, according to mine, they all failed. Oh, I got, I see a nine in there. Oh, I got okay. a three, a five, oh, a nine, was, and a five. Right. I was thinking of the damage, but yeah, yeah you're right. And yeah. as it, and so they're all blinded. Blinded until the start of my next turn. Great. So, so now they're blinded time. and in magical darkness. I love it, guys. <laughs> they just absolutely cannot <laughs> Thank you for making this encounter so fun for these zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to use for blinded. I don't have like an eyeball image or anything. Oh, they got to do. It's a bleeding eyeball, but I guess that'll work. I can't believe I rolled a six and a one. That's like bad mojo. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Orkin, you can see Odd like open up this deck of cards. It's just into the into the darkness. Like you can see it hitting the zombies, but nobody else can. It's just like this flood of uh, of cards. Does that end your turn, Odd? Yes, sir. All right. So after that, Orkin, it's your turn. What? Why did you just throw that all over the floor? It's called 52 Pickup. We're going to play it later. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Orkin's going to st step down into the darkness here. And then yeah. facing towards the fireball is actually going to take a page from uh, Odd's book and cast a spell directly off in front of him and cast Thunder Wave. <laughs> and focusing on primarily these two right in front of him, trying yeah. to push them back. Uh, if I can catch this guy right here, I'd great if not. Yeah, you could do that. You could hit all three of those guys. Yeah. So I'm going to grab all three of those uh, guys. Group check. That's uh, a con 14 save. Con 14. You got it. 14 save. Uh, does it have nine? Is it nine total damage? Is that what that is? Nine total. Uh, half if they save. Half if they if save. They fail, they are pushed back 15 feet. Push back 15 Whoa. feet. Oh, oh, all of them fail. So do I have to roll as well? <laughs> no. No. It's, it's a square. Oh, is Thunder Wave, Thunder Wave is a square yeah. out? Or is it... I think, I it's think Thunder Wave AOE. is an all-around you spell, isn't it? Yeah, it's a oh, it's a point-blank AoE. It yeah. really comes away from it. Oh, so I'm it's... thinking the wrong spell. Yeah, you're thinking the wrong spell. That would have an effect on Odd and probably your okay, wolf uh, uh, okay, band forest. Mind, <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody gets blown back. <laughs> okay, I know. Sorry, let me... Sorry, I think I, I know what spell you were thinking of. I am Wow, what spell was I thinking of that? Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, crap. Well, that's going to change it then. So. Sorry, guys. We've been playing Dragon Bane for a year. <laughs> uh, we're, we're trying the to music, learn D&D again. The music reminds me of, I mean, uh, what, what is that show? Okay. Stranger Things. Hmm? So, I mean, they, they can't take AOOs on you because they cannot see. So you can just walk in there and do it if you want. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They're yeah. blinded. They have to see for an opportunity to attack, so you can move right <laughs> into the middle of them. Yeah, you can see that they're still trying to swat uh, the remainder of the cards away <laughs> from their faces. I, yeah, so five, I think if you move ten. right here, you will literally hit everybody yeah, with Thunder Wave. I'm moving into, uh, yeah, so we're going to change up where I was a little bit. <laughs> okay. I will have to redo that um, that yep. that uh, yeah. that save. But you will hit every single one of them if it's 15 feet. Yep. And, and and I think me, I'm but, still going to hit odd fine. in this distance. Yeah, I'll, I'll be fine. Yep, you're still going to hit not, odd. I, I'm not I'll make it. I, I, Orkin's not watching odd right now. He's making sure the zombie can't take a swipe at him that's right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's dexterity save. No, uh, uh, con save. Oh, yes, con save. Hopefully it'll still let me keep this like that. Yep, con save. Uh, we need to do 14 again. I'm just going to keep that nine. As submit half on a save. Oh, we got two natural 20s in there. So it looks like uh, two, eight and 
three and five. Don't get pushed. Apply damage to all of them. I love that feature. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, look at that fail. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, so, catch me. <laughs> one, four, six, yeah, roll your and blast, seven get pushed. And one. Four. Uh, can't really get pushed. So there Six is a feature. Seven. So, oh no, with an attack roll, that's why. This is the same. Attack roll. Yep, yep, that's the saving throw. Yep, and I pushed the ones that I could push. Like some of them go slamming back up and against the wall. Uh, yep. Some of them just couldn't be pushed uh, farther. Uh, Odd does get like thrown back into Hazel's wolf form, huh. but cannot be like pushed back from there. Um, Thank you, okay. Bobby. Some of the zombies are happy that they're actually out of the black orb and now can see for just a split second before they aimlessly crawl back into it. And then, so let me see, that was I ten, I ten. So I'm going to go 15, 20 movement. I think the blind guy may get an attack of opportunity if he's going to try. He's blind and in darkness, but... Nope, nope. He doesn't get an attack of opportunity. I am going to bonus <laughs> action uh, Fay step again and teleport myself down over here. Okay. And then I am dropping concentration on darkness so everybody can see. Oh, and the circle disappears and now you guys can see. Uh, into the room now. And Orkin's <laughs> gone. <laughs> and Orkin isn't there anymore. <laughs> they ate him. And now they're going to eat us. Uh, zombie oh. number five gets to go. He's back in the back here and he's looking around. Uh, regaining his composure after that loud crack of thunder. Uh, shook the room. Uh, sees uh, Odd is the closest. So Lumber's... <clears throat> Uh, ahead and is going to try to slam odd. I guess you would roll a d20 for me, odd, for the mirror image. I was trying to see if the thunder wave would have affected them, but it doesn't really say. Uh, the only thing it might it just have pushes is just concentration. Okay. Oh. So does that mean it does not? It attacks one of your mirror images. Yeah, I'll attack one of my mirror images. Uh, their AC is going to be 13. It misses. So you don't have to worry about that as it tries to lumber forward and smack you. It does not do so. Uh, zombie number eight. Um, well, you would be out of line of sight, Orcon, from this one. So it's just going to kind of just lumber ahead here. And they're just piling up at the front of the or the end of this hallway kind of like a world war z kind of a situation where they're all just like piling up at the doorway uh, <laughs> uh zombie six can see you work on and lumbers towards you and tries to make a slam attack against you rolling a 19 i believe that's slams down on you for four bludgeoning damage as you get this decrepit hand slamming across the, the fr uh, top of your shoulder blades. Zombie number one is standing next to Odd, is blind, so is going to make a disadvantage attack. You still have to roll a d20 before it attacks for your mirror image. I'm sorry, I was I was reading it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it, it ignores anything but an attack directly at it, so AOE does not affect it. So it's going uh, against another I, mirror image. Yep. Uh, go, oh, a 22. No, no, my baby. So one of your mirror images does get hit and disappears yep. and dissipates. So the one extra forest is gone. Violet Thunder's light. <laughs> zombie 2 is blind and just lumbers kind of forward a little bit uh, zombie 3 is blind and just kind of lumbers forward a little bit hazel it's your turn okie <laughs> dokie um now that i can see i want to move 
the flaming sphere. Because none of them ended their turn near it, so it's not doing anything right now. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to give you uh, control of that oh. animated token as well, so you can move it at your leisure. It's so Hazel's going to pull it... <laughs> at, well, man. Hazel's going to pull it this way. Okay. Um, and then dash around odd and this zombie if i have to go fight it to get through it i will but i want to get over here um uh you wouldn't be able to get there through it. yeah you wouldn't be able to get through because of the line of enemies there um if i stand it just in it like just kind of stinks because this you guys are like stuck in a funnel okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wrong guy at the front of the choke point. Wrong, yeah. wrong guy at the front of the choke point. <laughs> can I, because Odd and I are allies, can I stand in his, in his point with him and bite the zombie? Uh, what I will do is I will let you squeeze in there, but you'll have disadvantage on any attack that you try to make. Okay, well, then I think it becomes just a regular attack because the wolf has advantage on attack rolls against a creature if at least one of the wolf's allies is within five feet of the creature. And oh, yeah, attack tactics, yeah, you got it. Uh, does that one zombie that you're uh, taking the fire thing after, does it have to make a dexterity saving throw? End of its turn. End of its turn? And I just moved it near it, so... Okay. Oh, I thought you could, like, roll that ball into people. Oh, I could. Right, hold on a second. I thought that was one of the things that it did. This. Um... Yeah, as a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ram a sphere into the creature, that creature must make a saving throw, a dex saving throw of Dex 12. saving th of 12. Okay, let's see how it does. They are not very dexterous. I'm open. Uh, does roll a 12, though. Though they take half of 2d6. Half of 2d6? All right. 2d6, so three points of damage. Three points of damage to that zombie. You got it. And then... I will bite attack. Let's see if this works with the bite. Oh! Oh! Out. Look at that! Crit! Look at what? <laughs> I bit a zombie real good. Six plus crit? Yes. What is that I don't, doing? I don't know what that means. Can that anyone else see it? Is roll 20 just frozen for me? Yeah, I don't see uh. it. I, I see it. Either. Oh, probably because it's on the wolf token. Oh. So it's only appearing in his uh, chat. Oh, uh, yeah, NPC. probably. That's, that's cool. Uh, okay. It's weird how it rolled damage. I'm trying to figure out how much damage does your bite normally do? My bite does uh, 2d4 plus 2. Do you want me to just roll that? Okay, I see what it did. It's 6 plus 3. Okay. That's what it's doing. Well, what's oh, your wait. plus is what's your strength bonus? Or no, it's already adding it to the first one. Two D four plus six was the first plus the three, so nine points of damage is how much you do with the with the bite. So nine points of damage to that mm -hmm. zombie. Yep, nine points. Do mm -hmm. so you bite and into it? I just I growl and I'm kind of like shoulder pressing into odd to be like, get the hell out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Does that strength save happen? Or does it have to, like, charge for that to happen? Do you see 11? If the target is sure, yeah, it does happen. So if it makes a DC 11 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. And it falls prone. Oh, that zombie's <laughs> on the ground. So... Can I run over it now that it's down? I'll allow it. But Hazel. if you go, if you go past that next square, you might have some opportunity attacks. Only like Dang. five of them. Don't be uh, yeah. <laughs> Charge in right there and stay right there. Cause, okay. And she's like waiting for her friends now that the zombie's down. Okay. Selena, you're up. So. Prepping, prepping what I was going to do. So I'm going to move closer. Is the bluish token Brittany's wolf it is mm -hmm. so I'm gonna move in that into the spot that she's at she's a halfling and well, she can share space oh yeah she can share yeah she can yeah and then I am going to 
attack with my rapier. Okay. As my initial action. Okay, which uh, zombie are you attacking? I numbered them on uh, purpose, so you guys could just tell me zombie one, two, three, four, whatever one you want. Zombie five. Zombie five, you got it. Uh, that zombie is currently prone, so you would have advantage on your attack roll. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So I just roll a normal dice. Yep. One d eight. Well, it should it should on your character sheet. You should be able to click on your rapier, and it'll automatically roll it all for you. Oh, do you want me to click it again, or just use yeah, it? yeah, yeah, read yeah, re redo it from your character sheet. Okay. Uh, it's only an eight to hit. Unfortunately, an eight is not going to do it. Uh, you do have bless, so you add one. You do have bless. To add the d four to your roll. Wait, you gave bless? I thought you only gave bless to three of us. Yeah, just yeah. that's one odd. Selena does have oh. it. Yep. Oh, I thought it was Hazel. Okay. Yep, you can add a D4 to that. So do I just you, click a normal D4? Yeah, just roll yeah. a normal three. Uh, you need a three or a four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a hit. Now you should be able to click right on rapier in that Twitch chat, and it should automatically uh, roll your damage for you. He means in the roll twenty chat. In the and oh yeah, in the roll twenty chat, chat. If you click on that purple outlined rapier right there, it should just roll it for you. I don't see it. If, if you hover, you hover eight on the right hand side, where you rolled the rapier a moment ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Click just on the word click, rapier. Click on right the word the rapier. rapier. There's okay. your damage. Ten piercing. Ten damage. That. Okay, I gotta make a quick roll. Um, you guys, you guys are gonna hate me. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Uh, it's not just automatically rolling these, so I gotta roll them myself. So, uh, okay. Not, not to be a a rules Nazi, but. Flaming Spear is not prejudice. So if you end your turn there, you're going to burn. I, yeah. I was, I, I was just thinking that. I was like, oh, no. I made True. a move. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. uh, actually, as Selena like, dives over top of this zombie, kind of like rolling underneath the wolf and feeling the heat from that sphere, she takes mm -hmm. the rapier and just drives it through that zombie, like skewering it. Uh, like a shish kebab, and that zombie stops moving and is just lifeless there on the uh, on the floor. For the sake of the the, the reminder, because Odd and I had the same brain in the mm -hmm. same moment of it ending, uh, like when you end your turn, um, can since that zombie's dead, can Selena stand in that zombie spot so she doesn't get burned? She can, yeah. Uh, you can I, also drop con concentration at any point, even somebody else's turn. I want to hurt people with my fire. He wants to body slam odd onto the fire. Don't <laughs> <take it. laughs> oh, I have a. I had used all twenty-five of my. Movement. Oh, so she can't move then from there. Yeah. And I, realizing that and feeling the the, I'm gonna but, get burned because I ended my turn. I will drop the sphere. I don't want Selena to get hurt. Okay. I was uh, gonna say so... I have action surge. No, don't, don't do it. I could drop this well, no uh, problem. Okay. okay. So uh well I think you need to make a saving throw. I do. Go ahead and you can make your saving throw against your own sphere. Uh, yep. <laughs> How it um I'm just double checking. Okay. Dex saving throw. Nope, I get hurt. Oh two D six, I believe it is. Oh, ouch! Yeah. Toasty, toasty. I'm fine. Oh, hey, good. No, that's yeah, a, hey, that's a that's roll. a that's a great <laughs> roll for that. Roll that's it. Real bad damage there. Uh, and are you getting rid of the sphere then, because you don't want Selena to take damage? Yeah, I'm dropping okay. the sphere before the turn ends. Like, oh wait, she got close. Crap! And then it goes uh, sphere goes out. <laughs> you got it. Cool. <laughs> Selena was able to put character. down. Yeah. Could I have saved the five feet and been in the same square as the zombie five? Not really, because the zombie was still alive whenever you got there. Okay, so I would have mm -hmm. had to be... 
like, you would have had that movement or... left over after you she, made the killing blow. She's asking if she could have shared the square while he was alive. Not really. I wouldn't. Uh, technically, you're not supposed to. Yeah, I uh, technically, to I'm letting you guys either. move a lot more than you should be rules related like technically you guys shouldn't have been able to even get in the room but yeah, I, I think it's kind of dumb the way this map is laid out that they don't allow you like a way for all of you to be engaged so i'm kind of letting that happen yeah i believe halflings mm -hmm. can move through enemies but they can only share a space with an ally right 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 exactly mm -hmm. okay uh, zombie seven sees zombie six having success against orcon and can only move well actually technically diagonal i would say you could get make an attack against orcon only gets an 11 i believe that's gonna miss you that's gonna miss yep yep slams the wall next to you zombie four is still blind but odd's turn was over right no yeah, my turn until his, his next turn until your yeah, next turn. Until the start okay. of my next turn. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, gonna move over and attack Odd with. Well, actually, attack um, Selena with disadvantage. Only a twelve. I don't think that's gonna hit you. The wolf kind of bumps the attack out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid that attack, easy. Not gonna do it. Forest, you're up. So I still cannot get into melee with anybody. At the I'll, I'll make the same rule for you. If you want to like squeeze next to Odd and make an attack, you can. You'll just have disadvantage. Just, it's just a remember. blind enemy, so it actually would be flat. It would be flat because it's a blind enemy. True. Just remember, you'll be squeezing against yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, let's make this more confusing. <laughs> there are more forests in one spot. <laughs> so many forests. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll make that attack against this guy here. Uh, okay. Oh, no. That's a natural one, so we uh, just got nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> the sword clangs off the wall next to the enemy. Not striking true. Oh, wait, we true. one player reroll, right? You do have a player reroll. Yeah, do it. Use oh, it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. it up. Gonna use it? Do it. There oh, much go. better. Look at that. Thanks, chat, for that player reroll. They used cashed it in. That definitely hits. And I'm I'm assuming that you're using it one handed because you have the shield. Is that Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. So thirteen uh, damage. 13. This one got hit by a bunch of things already, right? It did. So it does um, have to make okay. one check and it's gonna be very, very difficult. Um let me pull Basically this up. Needs a nat 20, I think. Uh, yeah, fails terribly. And that zombie has been destroyed by your sword as you gouge through it. Yeah, I am going to well done, step Forrest. forward into this spot to put Odd behind me as well. You finally, you're in the room, Forrest. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and now we go to the next round. Odd, you're up. All right, let's see here. I am going to squeeze through here, if that's all right with you. And at the start of your turn, these zombies are no longer blinded, yeah, I believe. They're, they're no longer blinded. Yep. Um, what is what is the uh, the symbols on me? What do they mean? One of them's bless. Uh, the other one is your mirror image. OK, yeah, I still got two of those. All right, um, I'm going to go in um, mm -hmm. squeezing by forest. Uh, running right into the zombie aid, and I'm like, oh, huh. wow, what a surprise. I did not see you there. Hey, let me tell you a quick joke. Why are zombies always sleeping? Because they're dead tired. And I'm going to cast hideous laughter on them. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Is that that one zombie eight right next to you? Is that the one you're... Yep. Yep. Okay. Zombie eight. DC 13 wisdom. DC 13 wisdom? Mm hmm. Oh gosh. Are you kidding? I mean. Oh, just makes it. I also don't want to be that guy, but do so zombies that... have an intelligence of four or higher? Uh. Oh. Yep. Uh, is that, is yeah, that have an right. intelligence? <laughs> yep. You're right. Yep. 
He, he, he kind of, the zombie kind of looks at you uh, anyway and, and starts going. <laughs> hey, he got the joke at least, huh? <laughs> I don't think he realizes he's laughing. Oh, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> uh, unsuccessful. Anything else yeah. on? Uh, let's see what I got, what I got. Bonus actions here. Mm, where is Orkin? Where, where do you I guys see don't, him? you okay. don't know, you don't see him. Don't He's see abandoned him. you, right. odd. How dare, how dare he? <laughs> uh, I guess since Zombie Eight's the only one in sight for me. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use Bardic Inspiration on Hazel since she does not have Bless. Oh, there you go. How are you inspiring yeah. Hazel? Uh, good, good puppy. Good. <laughs> good, <laughs> good puppy. <laughs> oh, oh, puppy, let's get revenge puppy, you feel on all those times that you pet Connery. Good puppy. Uh, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Payback, right? I think we just found the wolf's name. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and now that you feel inspired, Hazel, it is Orcon's turn. Okay, uh. And you've got some friends down there, Orcon. Yeah, uh, didn't really think this through when I dropped that darkness. <laughs> I didn't think it would come down this way, so I'm gonna try to get a uh, zombie number seven the hell away from me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to cast a spell at him and see if I can't get him away. Uh, right. He is right in my face, so I do have disadvantage on it. That's first and... Ooh, a ten. A ten, I believe. Hits! Oh, nice. <laughs> there you go. So are that you, going, is... you were going for zombie six, right? The one right in your face? Uh, nope, zombie seven. Oh, the one diagonal to you? Okay, yep. gotcha. All right. So okay. seven uh, force? Seven points of force damage and two points of thunder damage. Wow. And is it... he is... Where... Where'd you go? There's something extra on there, isn't there? Yep. That's it, well, that, that thunder damage is extra. Yeah. And I believe... But there was like an effect. Yeah, I think he's pushed. I'm just looking forward. I can't remember if that's the... Uh... I think repelling blast is 10 feet. Yeah, that's, there it is. Uh... Oh, no. Uh... I have agonizing blast, not repelling yet. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So that uh, just does the extra damage. Yep. Yep. That's what you get for making us make multiple characters. We're getting... <laughs> <laughs> so with this blast of energy it slams into the zombie more flesh gets torn off it. it's still alive and lumbering around but you can see you've torn a lot of it off um anything else or don't you people ever just die <laughs> um uh, bonus action yep um we're gonna see uh, how smart these things really are. <laughs> Orkin is going to run. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. So run about 25 feet this way. I'm assuming they're both gonna swing at me. Yep, they will both make opportunity attacks. Okay. First one is a 12, which misses. Yep. And the second one is a natural one. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Bonus action that nobody sees. <laughs> the storm in uh, Orkin's lantern starts to get a little more violent. And then this vortex comes out of the lantern. And Orkan, Orkan disappears into it. And the lantern just clatters to the ground. Orkin's gone. Very nice. Oh, abandonment issues. <laughs> no, I have no choice but to assume they have eaten Orkin. <laughs> yes, he's devoured completely. <laughs> uh, zombie 8 goes. Uh, 
that was the zombie that uh, Odd kind of offended. Hey, hey. So that zombie is going to try to attack Odd. Go ahead, and go, yeah, go ahead and roll a d20 to see if it attacks you or your other forest. All right, now that I'm down to two, it's got to be an eight or higher. But does it know that mm -hmm. I'm not one of the same forests? Yeah, it thinks, right. it, yeah, they, they have no idea. These are, these are all trees of the same forest. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. so, AC 13. So, AC uh, six misses. <laughs> it doesn't, can't even hit the, uh, the mirror image. Uh, zombie six lumbers down the hall searching for Orkin. And he's just staring down at a lantern. Mm. Mm. Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it does. Uh, zombie number one is up here. It's going to attack Forest. I hope they drool on your lantern. Uh, and miss terribly. Uh, Forest, you're easily able to shrug off that attack with your shield. Uh, uh, zombie two is going to attack uh, the wolf. Another six. What is wrong? Um, you only roll sixes. I only roll sixes. The wolf lets out like a laughter sound. <laughs> <laughs> Zombie three uh, can see now and uh, is going to lumber towards odd. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your d20 odd. <laughs> All right. Nope, Ooh. that's going to be me. That's going to be you. Uh, An 18! Oh, it slams you for three bludgeoning. A desiccated fist comes slamming towards you and slams you in the chest, Odd, and it makes impact. You're shocked by this. I'm down. <laughs> I only had three total. No, <laughs> Hazel, it's your turn. Uh, um, Hazel uh... Yeah, just is gonna attack zombie two that came at her and missed. Um, okay. Yeah. And fight. So a sixteen to. Hit. That hits. For and seven damage on zombie damage. two. And make that eleven strength save. Strength save. You got it. Don't know why those are just sending to you. Ooh, oh, natural twenty. Twenty one. Okay, so that zombie's still standing. But he's still yeah, there. that zombie is still standing, but you can see, like, you've torn a piece off of it whenever you bit into it, and it's kind of gross. Yeah. <laughs> he, bleh, he spit it right down on the ground. <laughs> like a dog that's being told to drop it, and he's like, <laughs> All right. Anything else, Hazel? Uh, no. Didn't know if you wanted to move or you were staying put. Staying there. All right. Selena, you're up. Did Odd say he's uh, out of hit points? He was joking. <laughs> he was joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That changes what I was going to do. Um, I am going to attack Zombie 2 with my rapier. Okay. Um, That will hit. Go ahead and click on that uh, rapier to do your damage. Seven damage. All right. And I then... need to make a save real quick. Hold on one second. Uh... Okay, so here's what happens. When you slam into this zombie, uh, it looks as if you dealt the killing blow. It starts to, like tumble down and slams the ground, but then it slowly starts to rise up again. And rises back up to its feet. Um, for, are we using the feats that we were given? Or is that not so level yeah. 10? Yeah, you, the, the feats that you chose for your level 1 uh, starting character, yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the ones I picked was Sweeping Attack. And that allows me to hit a creature with a, after I've already hit one with a melee attack. I can expend one dice to hit another creature with the same attack. Yes, you can. 
Mm -hmm. Can I hit zombie one? You can. Because he's uh, within five feet yeah, of the original within target. Within five feet? Yes, you can. Uh, now, what you'll have to do is you'll have to pick either your D8 or your D6 and just go ahead and roll it because that will add to, is it the, to the attack or the damage? Uh, damn it. With the original attack roll would hit the second creature, it takes damage equal to the number you roll on the superiority. On the, so, so the extra target only takes what you roll in the superiority. Okay. So yeah. you're going to roll the D8 or a D6? I'm going to roll a D6. Okay, go for it. Perfect. So you carve three points of damage into this zombie next to him as well as you slice through one and into the other with your rapier. All right. Are you going to stay put or you want to move? Um, I was going to stay put. Yeah, I will say if you moved, you might uh, provoke an opportunity attack from any one of those uh, zombies least. around you. At least one. Mm -hmm. The one thing I will say is I have interception. But I don't know exactly how that would work. Uh, interception would help a fellow player near you. Yes, another so if, player, yeah. It's going to yeah. successfully hit us, you can intercept. So if like, I, it hits me, you can intercept that attack against me. Okay. Zombie 7 lumbers down the hall next to Zombie 6, and they're both just going... <clears throat> looking at a lantern on the ground and then around the hallway. Forrest, you're I'm up. Here, boy. <laughs> so, all that of these zombies have taken tall? some damage, right? None of them uh, are. Yeah, from what you can tell, it's hard to tell how damaged a zombie yeah. is because uh, which, they're just one, rotting which one flesh. Looks the, healthiest? But, uh, the one that looks the meatiest is probably the one standing next to Odd right now. Zombie eight. Zombie eight looks. Yeah, I will looks okay. Zombie eight for a zombie. <laughs> I, will I don't like that you guys are insinuating that I'm not pulling my weight. <laughs> you know, that imitation forest is looking pretty meaty, too. Might <laughs> that. Wow, a 17 slash for six, and you were attacking and, uh, zombie eight? Yes, and I am going to divine smite. Oh, okay. Expending a spell slot to slam into it with divine smite for seven points uh, of damage. Hold on, it's undead. It is. For fifteen radiance damage. Oh, fifteen. So as you slam into this, this flash of divine energy uh, leaves the impact point from Forest Blade, and then all you guys see is this terrible desiccated husk of a of a zombie lying on the floor motionless that is gone destroyed and uh, i odd, do not odd. have a lot to do with bonus action so that will be my turn here okay odd is just gonna wipe some of the flesh off his face like <laughs> <laughs> and open the zombies no enough <sighs> to attack the one dealing radiant damage <laughs> intelligence of three yeah. uh odd <laughs> you're up <laughs> what do you do um, Odd is gonna go over here. Uh, let's see. This is the only one that's still alive. Well, down here. In Where, the middle of the room, room. Where's, where's Mr. Lantern? I want to play Kick the Can. You could have swore there were six zombies in here. You're not really sure. Jeez, those, <laughs> those, those rascally wabbits. All right. Um. <laughs> I'm going to save my spell slot, and I am just going to go ahead and try to shank one. Okay. Let's say right here. Oh, yes, that hits. All right. Let's go ahead and shank him. <laughs> uh, got damage going here. Seven damage. Nice. Right? I've, I've been working on my forearms. Yeah. yeah, you cut a piece off of this one. Now, as, as the zombie like looks to you, it looks like it's been like... I mean, I, I thought you were telling it jokes. It thought you were its friend, and now you're trying to like cut it apart. He has like a, a betrayed look on his face. And, and as, as our <laughs> eyes meet, 
<laughs> As our eyes meet, I just want to remind him, you look so dead serious. <laughs> and then immediately it. it goes back to its intelligence three and... <laughs> Unfortunately, like, my bonus actions are really designed to help Orkin, and Orkin seems to be gone. So, he's, that's my turn. just a lamp. Uh, Orkin, <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do, Mr. Lamp? <laughs> so, as... According to Odd, all the zombies have been destroyed because <laughs> there were only six. <laughs> you know, yeah, I can't see. I can't see where you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, are down here staring, and making noises, and growling now. In my oh, are way, you in the hall? Huh? Are you in the hall? I, I'm still here. <laughs> he, he, he is down the hall, you. though. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can still hear them in the hall. Mm -hmm. And Orkin is, uh... Orkin had a bit of a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> is realizing this is not what a hero does. <laughs> so bonus action is going to come back out of the lantern. Is it like with smoke? Or, like, uh, you just, like, bam, out of it. Like. As they're staring down, they witness that same thing where it looks almost like the hurricane and that eye of the storm is coming back up out of the uh, opening of, the, like, the lamp section of the lantern. Mm -hmm. And from within that, you see as Orkin just appears and materializes back out of it. Okay, fantastic. And then... Right, uh, looking at the one right in front of him as I appear, uh, once more is gonna try to cast the spell at the one right in front of me. Okay, um, again, disadvantage because point blank range, yeah, point blank, yeah, that's still gonna hit 13. Another flash of energy jets right towards this zombie. Okay, so that is 13 points of wow. damage. Wow, 13 damage. Uh, I have to make a roll. Let me make a roll. Oh, there it is. Oh, character sheet. Uh, 13. Uh, oh, I need to roll good. Oh, two ones. One. Not very good. <laughs> two ones. You slam into that. That zombie like falls to pieces at your feet. Orcon. Gone. Man. But a little help down here around the corner, if you please. You guys so hear Orkun shout. <laughs> what? Who said that? <laughs> and um, then that will end Orkun's turn. You have movement, I believe, right? Yep, but Orkun it's isn't going to gonna charge through the uh, zombie in front of him. Okay, I was just making and sure you didn't want to go down the hallway. Seeing, yeah. seeing the strange glowing green light behind him. <laughs> He's probably not going to go charging that way without the rest of his friends either. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. They don't need to uh, know about the whole lantern incident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, zombie one is going to attack at Forrest. Try to slam him. Ooh, a 20. Punches Forrest for six bludgeoning damage. Forrest felt that one. Make my okay, now, concentration now, check here. Hold, hold uh, on. Concentration check. Hold, hold on. I will say that this is the opportunity for you to use interception should you choose to, Selena. This is an example of somebody. Oh, within somebody five within feet five feet getting hit. hit. Yep. That's true. So if you choose to use your reaction for this round, that's how you do it. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I could cut in or if I had to wait till it was my turn. Cut in no, 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 you. you can cut in. Yeah, for that. Yeah, that's that's the whole, that's the purpose of that thing is to help your friends. So, oh. Michael, what were you going to say? Force was going uh, to it, it, it depends on if you do this or not, whether I have to make a concentration check. I'll jump in front of you. OK. 
So interception means that. Let me see if I can pull this up. I think it's one d10 that it gets yeah. reduced, and you if it's reduce zero, target by one d10 and my proficiency bonus. Okay, so one d10 plus be two. I must shield or a simple or martial weapon. Then. Yeah, you are with your rapier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you need to roll a d10, and then we're gonna add two to it, and that will reduce the damage taken. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Four so four, six, so you only take two points of damage, Forrest. I still got to make that check then, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and I you succeed. Good. Yeah, you're good. You can still hold concentration on the bless. Very good. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. And zombie two is going to attack the wolf again, since you bit it. Uh, and just slams on your back, but doesn't do any damage because it can't. It, it doesn't have any force because you just chewed all its muscles off. <laughs> Zombie three down here is going to continue to attack Odd. Why? Why? That's favorism. And you just uh, well, you go, <laughs> you go. I mean, it's going to miss probably anyway, but you still have to roll to see if it attacks one of your. Um, yeah, what's the it matter if it misses, right? Yeah, it's probably not yep, going to matter at all. Yeah, D13. it's going to miss. It's going to miss either way. OK, so it does not strike and Hazel, you get to go next. I mean, we oh, all know here, so bite, bite. <laughs> bite, bite, bite. Zombie. bite the zombie. Definitely hits for nine damage. I need to make a constitution save. Oh, and you bite the zombie and it just falls to bits down at your feet as it's destroyed. She goes, Bleh, again with the... <laughs> it tastes so yeah. gross. <laughs> <laughs> it makes like a little sound for my dog. <laughs> the gel. Uh, that's why I said to whisper rolls. <laughs> mm. All right, anything else? Uh... No, not... Well, I have a question. No. Selena is tiny. Small. Yeah. Small. Not can tiny. She, can she ride <laughs> a wolf? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just staying by Selena to give her the option. Should she want to quick run out of here? Are you doing the thing where you like one leg out forward, one leg yeah. bent, and like bowing down? <laughs> bowing a little. <laughs> yes. We've been hanging around for a little bit together. It's probably <laughs> the first time I've offered a ride if she wants it, but I'm. It's also like it's a bowing down position for her to climb on, but it's also I can lunge if I have to. It's like, but, you know. Selena, you now have a mount, <laughs> a trusty steed. <laughs> it's a little dumb at times, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's constantly spitting out zombie flesh right now. Yeah, glad <laughs> spitting it out. <laughs> Dry heaving. <laughs> That would be a tiger, and no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Selena, it's your turn. What would you like to do? I would like to attack Zombie One again. Okay, go for it. That's gonna hit. <laughs> wow, that is gonna be a good one. Let me make a saving throw really quick. And with that attack, you slice through the zombie's flesh and the zombie falls to the floor. And I am going to move five feet, um, just one space closer to odd. OK. You got it. Give Hazel some breathing room. That way she understands that she can move freely that I think we're we're gonna be okay mm. for now zombie seven seeing Orcon back in the mix is very hungry and just lumbers towards Orcon and tries to slam him a critical hit for only five bludgeoning damage as it slam it does like a double axe handle wrestling move and slams down on top of you Orcon <laughs> It didn't like that you fold it and going into that lamp, that lamp, 
that it doesn't even really, it's not intelligent to know that that's a lamp. <laughs> Forrest, you're up. I'm gonna move forward and attack the last zombie I can see here. Okay, go for it. <laughs> that will hit for 12 damage. That's a lot I mean, of damage. That is a lot of damage. I gotta make a saving throw really quick. I gotta roll really good. I rolled good enough. So you slam into it with uh, your sword. Man. But for some reason, you Fine think, fight. Forrest, that should have been enough. Wait, but it wasn't. Spell slot on a Divine Smite. Uh... Are you going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> kill Nuke him off the planet. <laughs> All right. So with we a blast, damage, you don't you don't even really have to roll the damage, but you can roll it if you want to. Just... As you slam into it with a flash of energy, that zombie is nothing but a pile of ash. And there's all 14. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, if you have any movement left, you can continue to move. Yes, I so moved five already, so we got one. Uh, I mean, two, three, four, five. I can just start to see what's going on in there. Oh, yeah. Morcon's currently getting slammed by a zombie bat down there. Odd, uh, you can see Forrest is running to where he heard the sound come from of Morcon yelling for help. The run down there, I'm behind Forrest. Mm -hmm. Forest is behind. Forest is behind. Forest. Mirror forest is behind. Forest, forest is behind. Forest. Then another so forest. We got, we got triplets here, and uh, I'm going to shout out at the zombie. Um, you ever been jumped by a forest? <laughs> Let's see if I have a way of posting this because I don't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't see a way of posting it into chat, but it is a unsettling words. Minus D6 on its next saving throw. So. Oh, okay. Minus a D6 on its next saving throw. Okay. Yep. And that's my, uh, that's my turn. Just remind me when the time comes of that, because I don't have a way of really marking that either. I'll put a little yeah, marker no, on it, it, but I got it. I won't. Okay. Doesn't do any damage or. Nope. Mm, okay. Just that when when it tries to do that constitution saving throw to come back to life. You'll have the minus D6. Yeah. Got a, got a smart <laughs> move. Smart move. I like that. Uh, Orcon, you just got beat up by this zombie. He deserved it. <laughs> Lantern. Lantern lover. <laughs> <laughs> If, if if you're talking, I can't hear you. Uh, once again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is usual. Oh, those are going to hit. Yes. That is another 10 points of damage. 10 <laughs> points of damage. Go ahead and roll your D6 for me, um, Odd. Uh, well, I did earlier. You want me to do it again? Oh, oh you rolled a, oh, for the, the, it was the four. Gotcha. Yeah. And with that blast, as the zombie's looking over its shoulder towards like where Odd and Forrest are coming from, you just hold your hand up, Orcon, and this blast of magical energy just consumes the zombie. And the zombie is no more. And that takes us out of combat. As I will clear their turns. And take us out of the combat music. Uh, Hazel what did we learn? Just Hazel Wolf. You can't kind of count. Things. There were more than six. <laughs> That's why I asked what we learned. Math is new to me. Hazel barks at Orcon. Oh. Where come Where does Wolf that? come from? Wait, uh, huh? Hazel looks That's up Hazel. at, at <laughs> Oh, it's Hazel. Yeah, I didn't see anything that was happening at the start there. <laughs> Hazel's wagging her tail at Forrest. 
I mm-hmm. scratch behind the ears a little bit. She like full body slams into him because she's a <laughs> dumb dog and just. <laughs> <laughs> Did we lose Odd? And why are there two forests? That's why is there another well, forest? That's... Odd is Only one shape of us has a shield, so it should be pretty obvious. Odd is going to shape shift into Orkin and look at his own mirror image of Orkin and just start mocking Orkin like, "What are you, buddy? You're not very good at math." <laughs> <laughs> so, on a different note, there is a bright, glowing <laughs> green light down this hallway, and looks to be some uh, sort well. of strange thing. Before that, there's an altar in this room that's been desecrated, and I'd like to do something about that. Oh, you. I'm I sure Odd could assist you with that. Perhaps a that. sacrifice could hollow the ground. So I am going to drop the shapeshift, turn back into Odd. Mirror image is going to wear off, and I will walk over to the altar with Forrest. Yeah, I assume it's this thing over here. Yes, yeah. And I will say this, as you guys are slowly approaching this altar, cautiously, looking around the room at all the desecrated zombie corpses that you guys have just destroyed, that's where we're going to end our first episode of Vecna, Eve of Ruin.